Hello and welcome to the Free Cheese episode 326. I'm your Joe Dix, joined by Matt Selner. Hello. Mark Augustiniak. What's up? The Free Cheese is a weekly video game podcast about video games brought to you once a week by thefreecheese.com. Good morning, Baltimore. And the rest of the world, how are you all doing? Mark, you have a week? Yes. Are you dead? What happened? <laughs> I mean, when? Ain't I? No. Right. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Just, uh, I think, going in from last night to recording this, I think that's like, the most sleep I've gotten intentionally. Me too. I drank a D-Energy drink and clenched my jaw all night. Now everything feels weird. Uh, do you, like, are you, like... Do you do what I do? We're just like you don't you catch yourself afterwards, but like for a while you just kind of just like oh yeah grit your teeth. Uh, I, I mean, I mean, I mean not not like lips closed, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like you just you just tighten up your mouth. Like, I don't think I usually do, but I think I was in like because I I was just wandering to the store buying weird drinks and I saw that and I was like I'll try that. I don't have a problem going to sleep, you know, these days. But whatever. Mm. I know to do it when I drive. And then, I mean, yeah, I definitely had I had it more when I smoked. Hmm. You know, <laughs> weird shit. But yeah, I. Uh, you do that. I don't know. No. Okay. Matt, welcome back from Nashville. <laughs> Howdy, y'all. How was Nashville? Fun. I drank a lot. Uh huh. Did you fight a lot? No, I did not fight a lot. You're supposed to drink, fight, and fuck. <laughs> Those are the three F's. Well, when I go with my family, I can't. Oh, uh, you gotta bring them in on the mix. So <laughs> <laughs> substitute the F for the other F. <laughs> That's true. Uh, yeah, I just drank. I drank a lot. I go. mean, I should probably go on a cleanse, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> just keep, just keep burying it, you know. Uh, well, welcome back. We've got a show this week. Uh, we've got... Um, I went to ArchiveCon in Baltimore. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, we're going to hear uh, first hot impressions of Death Stranding. Oh, yeah. Uh, some other stuff throughout the thing. Pokemon Sword and Shield impressions. Um, XO19, we got a, we got a lot of shows and we got a cool, hot email coming in fresh at podcast at the free cheese.com. Not email at the free cheese.com podcast. <laughs> podcast at the free cheese. <laughs> I, com. I do have one small question. If I can interject, this interject, second. hit me up. Update on Britface. Yeah. Nowhere to be found. However, search continues. However, I did get left out on the second half of a Honking Tall's bus ride. Oh. We made a pit stop at a brewing company called Yeehaw. Very, very cool layout. Um, it's like a half outside, half inside kind of thing. It was okay. very cool. Um, got caught watching a little bit of college football. Got That's a drink. Good. And then uh, we were like, oh, we think it's been our 20-minute break. Went out and the bus was gone. Ah, so oh. they probably found her in the second leg and we were not there. Oh. So close. Luckily, it was like a five-minute Uber back to like the main drag of. Yeah. But yeah, the search continues. Search continues. Can you imagine if you just saw her? <laughs> just if you were like in a fucking hex, they still have those, <laughs> and you just look across, you're like, "Fuck." I would, different, I right? would be you know more I mean? curious because I mean I think my parents, and my sister understand that like I'm very enticed in this culture. You know, so like they would probably just think it's like some kind of game developer or mm. some kind of actress or it's something like yeah. that. And I'm, oh no, it's YouTube sensation, <laughs> <laughs> Brit Face Yo. Hey Brit, can you hit me up with the big squeal, the original one? <laughs> That's good. Um, Hashtag where Brit Face go. If you see her, find she, her. She's like Let our. Us know. She's like our little Carmen San Diego now. Yeah, where in the world is Brit Face, yo? Where are the gum shoes? Oh, my God. <laughs> um, uh, Matt, last week you were not here, but Mark and I changed the format up a little bit. Well, some little temp poles. I liked it. Yeah. I think we're going to keep going with that. Of course, this week, though, there's... Say so we need some temp poles. <laughs> yeah. But this week we need a little more time to uh, dive into some stuff. So we're going to keep it a little more uh, a little more traditional. Not entirely. But uh, before we... Uh, before I talk about ArchiveCon, I want to know, last week, we started the show talking about uh, the remakes, the games that we believe need to be remade. Mm-hmm. I've still been thinking a lot about that Castlevania game. I've still been thinking a lot about World Warrior. Among the others, right? They Do all you deserve describe it, right? Shenmue? I'm just going to throw it out there. That, well, I guess I need to play Shenmue. <laughs> oh, man. But it doesn't have that engine. You gotta have the engine was like half the that game. That RE engine is fucking something. <laughs> As someone who has played some games on that engine in this last two weeks. 
What remake? What game does Matt believe needs to be remake? Given the proper remake treatment brought into the modern I era, I think you over like analyzed what you think my what your prediction of my uh oh thing is. Should we? Say, I want to know what your prediction is before he says what it is. Oh, you want to do a one, two, three? Shout the name of the game. We can do that. Right. I think you're. I, I think you're to say something stupid, and I have like. <laughs> Count it down, Mark. All a right. less famous game here. Uh, so I'm going to do three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, go, and then we say it. Yeah. All right, hit it All up. Right. Three, two, one, go. Siphon, Siphon filter. filter. All right. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Been asking for it, predicting it. Man. How would you do it? That Bubsy engine, first of all. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Bubsy didn't do so bad. Um, I think you could probably make that game into one of two things uh either like a more modern cover based shooter that's more like uncharted not as heavy as gears hmm. um okay do something like that or you could open it up and maybe go like no you're solid where uh i don't know how they would do the story that way and make it open world because that game is very linear yeah. but uh i was say what if it was like i'm thinking like modern splinter cell yeah, yeah. like more like conviction yeah something. i just like I think uh, it, I mean it's been a while since I played as uh, as Logan, uh, but uh, I and I kind of forgot the story of the first game at least. But I really just like, especially after playing some some Death, Death Strandings, got me all thinking about other Kojima mm. games. I really like that. Just put me in a helicopter, drop me down, and I'll let you know when I need to get out, and then yeah. you can pick me back up. And I just do uh, objective space like that. Um, yeah, I. Just realized I would confuse Siphon Filter with Winback. Dude, fucking Winback's dope. I don't even know what that is. It's the game that Jonah Hill played at the beginning of Super Bad Boys <laughs> in the bedroom. I never knew the name of that game. I mean, yeah. are, right. are they similar games? No, am it's, I... it's the exact game. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Siphon yeah. Filter and Winback. Like, am I, am I, am I like really stupid for confusing? Like, I don't know. But am also, I even thinking of what we've Winback totally really had is? this conversation before? I don't know if it was on air or not, but I've definitely used that example <laughs> to describe it to you. And you've gone, oh, now I know. What <laughs> <laughs> Might have been in a video we did, but. Yeah. yeah, I think it's the cover for some reason. I, the I covers are very was... because it has the target. The yeah, I think it led to us pulling up the cover. I, yep. We've had. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right, we've sorry, had I didn't mean to repeat. I think but... this is what the definition <laughs> no, of death training is. It, it, it <laughs> just keeps going. Yeah, no, it's just you know, some dude with crew cut hair and a pistol. It, I feel like that game had good <laughs> physics though, or something about it Maybe. felt good. My friend uh, Chris would rent it all the, the time. Pull up the cover for Fighting Force Two. I think they're the same no, cover. It's not, <laughs> it's not the same. Um, cool. Uh, yeah, no, I, I mean, Sony should do something with Siphon Filter. It's been, uh... I mean, it's not a crosshair, but it's rails. <laughs> and blue. Yeah, it's that blue. It's got that metallic... Everyone was Jason Bourne before Jason Bourne was Jason Bourne. <laughs> that makes sense. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just, uh... I don't know, it's... I want to play Siphon Filter again. I, yeah, feel I, like, mean... I feel like if you remake it... Yeah. Look, Ben got their shot to do something different, and they did it. No, let's go back, you know. Get it going again. I'm trying to think if there's anything from Days Gone you bring into Siphon Filter. Nah. Well, I haven't played much of Days Gone, but there's there's yeah. some interesting mechanics It's won there. some awards. Mm. Oh, okay. oh, I, th- I think it was for storytelling, actually. Best game by Sony Ben put out this year. Well, <laughs> by default. Um, uh, <laughs> Death Stranding has an ad for... Uh, <laughs> for uh, Days Gone? And... Uh, you know, the right, the, uh, the AMC ride ride with, with Norman Reedus, Reedus on AMC. I, all right, while you're taking a shower, <laughs> no, it's shitting. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's it's random. Like it'll, it'll pop up. Not well, every I'm making time, ammunition. <laughs> Preserving video games. <laughs> yes. Let's talk about it. I all right. So there's a uh, archive game history conference uh, put on by Magfest and Mica Game Labs. Game Lab, sorry. Uh, Micah is the, what, Maryland Institute College of Art? Do I have that right? Sounds right. Sure. And, um, yeah, I don't know. This popped up in my Twitter feed this week, and I was like, oh, shit, that's where I live. I should I should go there. So you just... I just went. Impulse. Oh, yeah. Cool. Um, it took everything, because you know I don't fucking want to go outside or do anything at all. And even, like, parking the car, I was like, ah, I'll just go home. And then... <laughs> You just drive your car through your house and you don't want yeah. to get out of it. Just, uh, But I'm glad I went. Uh, it was... So 
I went Friday night. There is an all day thing or was an all day thing on Saturday that um, had a lot of talks from different people, uh, like multiple things happening at once, like, you know, in different rooms and, and whatnot. Like a con. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was smaller than I expected oh, yeah, yeah. something a little bit bigger, but this was like in like a like a college building. You know what I mean? Like think well, about like a, it as a college. But like think <laughs> about a single building on a college campus. Yeah. Like this was just in there on one of the floors. Like I walked in and the security guard was like, Are you here for the game thing? And I was like, Yeah. He's like second floor. And I was like, All right, and I went up and just literally like one floor of the building. And not even that, it was like one room. They had a couple tables set up with um consoles there was Probably like nine TVs and consoles, Street hmm. Fighter running, Mortal Kombat, um, a couple other things. I didn't, I, I couldn't remember. Um, but I went because the co director of the Video Game History Foundation, Kelsey Lewin, was doing a talk about saving video game history. And um, the Video Game History Foundation was founded through two, three years ago. Um, oh. And th- since the foundation, there. The big goal there that they've had is to, like, just spread the word about video game preservation and make sure that people are keeping it at front of mind. Um, So some of the projects they've done that you might remember, like, popping up, the biggest one, I think, has been recovering SimCity for the NES. Remember, SimCity came out on SNES, but there was an NES version that Will Wright had worked on. I did not know that. um, Frank Cifaldi of the Video Game History Foundation, like, uncovered the source code I, I'm, I'm not saying it's all frank but you know as part of this organization um had uncovered it and put hmm. that game put the rom out on the internet um there's been a lot of that stuff a lot of like magazine archiving um the big one and one of the parts that uh kelsey had talked about during the talk is there's an article on the site from october 7th 2017 by rich whitehouse um who had written about basically someone and I don't know I don't think it was him someone had stolen all of the stuff all of the the code for Disney's Aladdin on Sega Genesis like that all that project someone stole the stuff from where they worked right like they just took a copy of the source code because they worked there and they'd worked on this game and they were proud of it but Hmm. You know, you're not supposed to do that, right? No, you're supposed that's... to, that work is that work, and that's yeah, that. That's the um, companies. But thanks to him <laughs> doing that, now years later, uh, someone was able to recompile that and write this cool article about like, hey, we're keeping video game history alive by doing this. Well, after this yeah. article happened, uh, Disney reached out to uh, Video Game History Foundation and said, hey, y'all got that source code? Because they didn't have it. Because backing up video games and saving all of that stuff is really hard to do. As, um, as Disney loads their rifle. Well, and Frank, who <laughs> works for a Video Game History Foundation, uh, also like his because this is a you know nonprofit organization, makes his money by working uh, with Digital Eclipse and Other Ocean are okay. some of the places. So they've done a lot of um, re-releases or those types of things, and they're the ones behind the just recently released Lion King and Aladdin combo that's, pack thing. That's pretty cool. Um, so Disney had reached out and said, "Oh, you got you know." You did this, and now it turned into a profit, right? And it's like, it's one thing for keeping this stuff alive because it's important to keep it alive, but now companies are starting to see that there's a a reason to do it, a a financial reason to do it. Um, So there was a thing, I think I sent it to you, that EA talk. There was the game preservationist from EA um, who had talked about how EA is going about preserving their games. It was really fascinating, but um, the talk last night was really just kind of spreading awareness about um what they're doing with like they just went to game informer and got scanned every issue of game informer and and, like that kind of stuff and as people donate things they're archiving it as best they can and then sharing it with other resources so there's a game magazine retrogamemag.com i think that has all these old game scans and they're making sure that that stuff's out there and like it's just keeping all that stuff, but keeping more than just like, hey, here's a ROM of the game, or right. hey, here's a shelf full of video games. Look at this great collection. It's more like keeping the fucking sketches that someone made of what Aladdin should look like in the game, or, or whatever that little thing is. That's keeping cool. copies of like not just a video game magazine, but like 
right, like, Time magazine that has Pokemon on the cover to talk about how fucking big Pokemon was when it. Uh, so yeah, so it's more than just the source itself. It's yeah, everything the, surrounding it and what it's spread out to. Exactly. Yeah, it's like all of the uh, as cool. I've as I've heard mentioned before, the ephemera surrounding all that stuff. It's a giant time capsule. Yeah. Um, the so what? Ephemera. It's like it's. <laughs> That's the stuff that's like fleeting. That's not gonna. Like, oh, all right. Well, first time I heard a word. Um, <laughs> something that is ephemeral is lasting for a very short time. But the the game ephemera, like the stuff that's like, you know, it's like one thing to have the box of the thing and have the manual inside. But it's also like, what about the, the magazine like, insert or the magazine insert or the fucking McDonald's? Not the McDonald's toys that you got, but the commercial for the toys. Like, is that archived somewhere mm-hmm. to capture? You know what I mean? It's like. All that stuff that just like disappears and vanishes is what they're chasing to um, get. Anyway, yeah, uh, it was a cool talk, and then uh, you know I didn't end up going Saturday to the thing because I cleaned my house, but <laughs> they, they had <laughs> a whole day worth of stuff. Um, and it seems like the folks who put it together are very eager to do more stuff like this. I don't know, like it, this doesn't say like this was the third annual or whatever. No, this is the first edition of Archive, is what this says. So this is the first one of these, so I assume they'll try and do more. Um, especially with it being co-sponsored with MAGFest. Like, I can see where that might be a thing. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I, the MAGFest thing was a surprise. I wasn't expecting that. But at the same time, no, that that makes total sense. Or, like, MAGFest can, whenever they hold their things, they can have, like, a panel there dedicated to... Yeah, because yeah, like, cause, cause they don't just have... Like, they have stuff year-round. It's not just... Right, the right, one right. in, yeah, in yeah. January. They have like the smaller one, but they're usually more music based. But yeah, that's cool that they're, yeah, expanding. Well, the one, uh, the some I think at Magfest this last one, um, Frank and Kelsey did a talk with two other people at Magfest about all this stuff too. So yeah, um, they usually have panels like developers and stuff and stuff like that. Yeah, among the like. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're interested, oh shit, <laughs> sorry. If you're interested, um, you can find stuff about them at gamehistory.org. Um, go to YouTube uh, to the – you can search to the Game Developers Conference stuff, GDC stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you can see um, a lot of what uh, the talk was last night. I've seen parts of that before that Frank's given those talks at GDC, so you can watch that stuff too. If you're interested in – and then they have a Patreon you can donate to as well. Um it's cool. So it's interesting. Yeah, it sounds cool. Yeah. I mean, it makes me, anytime we talk about that stuff or think about that stuff, I think about it like how happy I am to still have some random like pieces of my gaming history. You know what I mean? Like open a box somewhere and I have like a dumb yeah, I, something, you know? I, I wish a lot of it was more taken into consideration back in my childhood because we would always have to get rid of a system to get a system. Yeah. So I was like, ugh, okay. Um... That was cool, especially coming back from Japan, like, where I would wander into these random stores and just find, like, these weird, like, fragments or relics of some Japanese kid's past. You know? <laughs> like, you're just kind of digging through that stuff, and you really, like, see it for what it is. It's cool. Um, yeah. I kind of want to go to MAGFest, though. I threaten it every year, but maybe this is the one where I actually go. I, a day pass. I, know I was going to say, I see, yeah. if you do a day pass, I'll I'll go. But, I think that's uh, the way to do it. Like, I am... It's, it's cold as fuck. Yeah. Because it's like January, like... Yeah. It's like the first week of January. Yeah. Yeah, it always okay. slightly kind of interferes with our yearly predictions. Yeah. But that's fine, because I'm I not going to go down one, there and drink, you know what I mean? I think this gonna... is from the 2nd to the 5th. We'll have to look at it. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see how much a day pass is and all that stuff. I got some other trips I'm trying to go on next year. You know what I mean? It'll probably cost like between fifty to seventy five dollars. That's not terrible. And you just drive down because I don't think they do day passes anymore. I think it's just ticket, like the standard ticket price. Yeah, we can look at that. Yeah. All right, it is time we talk about some video games that we've been playing in the last week. Um, I think what I'm gonna do. Okay. Is because we have a lot, but I don't know where to start. Okay. So if y'all are okay with it, sorry, I'm getting closer to the microphone here. I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a robot pick for us. Okay. Is that fair? That's fine. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna type. 
Death Stranding. I'm gonna type uh, Devil May Cry. Sure. And I'm gonna type Pokemon. We're gonna hit done, and Siri's gonna tell us. Oh. Fun fact: she said it, and my volume's all the way down. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> this is uh, next level. I know. Randomization is important, you know. I mean, you could have just did that app. What's it called? The Three Fingers. Oh yeah. Well, Chingui. No, that's what I named my light. Uh, <laughs> Quasi. Quasi. Yeah, that's it. Do you... No, I'll, I'll save it for now playing. Devil may cry. All right. right. There we go. That devil almost spoken. That almost sounded like the menu the, the, <laughs> for the, for the game. Know. Or the devil, you know. <laughs> yeah. Because of, for every game, I think it is a woman saying it. Devil may cry five, Mark. Uh, it, do I start with just that one? Speaking of... Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I played a little Devil May Cry too. I want to talk about it. Okay. Um, Honestly, I played it because you played it, and I played it because I just had beaten Resident Evil 2, so I was, like, yeah, um, itching for it, you know? Yeah, I I think just, just coming off of, like, coming off of Luigi's Mansion 3, there's not much. I, like, I said everything I needed to say about it last episode, Yeah, but I finished it, so yeah. my feelings are still the same about it. I'm with you. I, yeah. I, I keep... Don't go along with that, and the only thing I wanted to bring up about it is that Toad is funny. There's yeah. a line that he just randomly he'll just go, "Wow," <laughs> as you're walking around. That's it. Uh, but yeah, so that led me into like I wanted to play something a little more enticing, and just I don't know. Yeah, I was like, Luigi's Mansion is very slow paced. Like it's I, I wanted some action. Yeah, I was missing it. And I get it. After All right, I, Pirate Man, Pirate Man Five Thousand, I did. Oh yeah, you know, and like after uh. I guess after my my issue with playing the first one and trying to go through them all and map off the point of them all, just jump to the fifth. Just one skip it. Just, yeah. just, do just it. enjoy it. So I took that advice, and right on in the as soon as you press start, there's an option to get caught up on the story. And I was like, oh, okay, go figure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the the funniest thing about it is that, uh, at, like it has this like little like video going on and there's all this cool text on the screen but it's also subtitled that was the weirdest thing and it's all english it's like there's no voiceover you just have to read everything but there's cool like uh there's cool like, it's like, cinematics going yeah, on it's like right. stylized text like written in like a cool font that's very legible it's not like you can't yeah. read it and then beneath it they just have regular <laughs> subtitles <laughs> which would make sense right if you were playing in with japanese like subtitles yeah. or something or another language it would make sense to put subtitles at the bottom, but when it's English on the screen and then English at the bottom, it was like the, the default for subtitles might have been on and the options. I just maybe just didn't. Yeah, but really I had turn it off. I had the same but, thing though. It yeah. was just a weird. <laughs> it's all was funny. So yeah, I mean that would catch up on the story, but there isn't. You kind of Dude, find I'm... out that it's not much of it is much. It is a story, but it's not much of a story, and it kind of repeats itself throughout the series. I watched the thing and I had no idea what the fuck. It's was basically going on just. <laughs> it's basically just a lifelong fight of Dante and Virgil. Yeah, I, fighting each other. That right. seems right. Sure. To whatever you know. I, it to, was, I was watching. I remember texting Mark and I was like, "I, I think just, I'm gonna bail on yeah. this watching this recap. I don't know how long this is." And then it was like kind of wrapping up, and I was like, "I don't know what's happening." It's it's just similar. Yeah. It's that, that's all it is. Just a never ending fight with shit in between. And uh, so yeah, going into this, I realized that this is kind of a good start for people who haven't played the other games, and if you. You know, feel like you're missing out on them. I know there's that collection out there, but you really do not need to play those to appreciate this game. And I'm I'm glad that's what it came to. Um, yeah, any, I mean, uh, th- th- I think I said it the other week, but Gears Five, I'm not. Don't think I'm losing the impact of playing yeah, that game no. by not, you know, not playing the other ones yeah. or anything like that. So right, and they do a good job with this by making you start out as as Nero because he was only in four. So I mean, there, there's some background to that. But uh, it's not technic- It's not that necessary going into this. So it's it, it, so and, and him having good... like a new look and everything. Yeah. I think that kind of emphasizes on the like it's a fresh start. This is a whole like this game doesn't yeah. play like the other ones. It's its own thing. So kind of like Resident Evil Seven. Like just go in here forward. Like things are going to be different. Yeah, and I like and there's still enough there for people who 
like the series and, and are looking for more of that series. Yeah. But for me, like once it got going, I I full I get what's going on, kind of sort of maybe. But and he's also a good playstyle to start out with because he's very simplistic. Like he. Yeah. So you like Y is his sword, X is his gun, and then B he's got this fuck. Someone stole his arm, so he's got a half arm. But then. Yeah, because because um, in four he he had, um, a demon arm. Oh, that makes sense. That's what, okay. And, that makes sense. That's what, and then yeah, they show like it got taken away. Yeah. So now he his friend Nico makes these different mechanized She's got robot arms, arms, and she, each each one does a different thing. Um, they all have like special abilities. But if you're like using the special ability as you're fighting and you get hit, it breaks it. But you can hold like they go in rotation. Just pick them up as you go throughout the level. But uh, it, it does add some variety to your fights, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm still getting used to using the arms in different ways because there's yeah like, different. Like, I don't like, know targeting and not targeting is it is changes up the whole thing. Exactly. Yeah, and even like holding or not holding B changes how the right. thing plays out. But it's um the one. Well, I'm not gonna spoil it. But that that one that you punchline. Yeah. Yeah, punchline is good. Fucking badass. <laughs> I think uh, I think you'll like that one, and um, oh, I forget the name of the other one. This one just kind of like whips around. That's cool. There's been, yeah, there's been a couple cool arms. Um, you beat it, right? So yes. I just got to the part where now I can play as V, or as I know him, Goth Finn Wolfhard. Um, and <laughs> V walks around with a book, and Bruh. yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, he's got a book and a cane, and he just fucking reads soliloquies to himself, and he's got a a uh, shadow panther and a shadow bird that he calls upon that you can attack with. That's kind of so, cool. It's yeah. Shadow bird, ravens. He's, well, yeah, he's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's like a big it. raven. The, the the and the and the demon bird talks. Yeah, the, he's like he's a smart ass. He's almost like a uh, fucking Zazo. What's the one from Zazu? Aladdin? Zazu. Is that yeah. one from Aladdin? Yeah, but it's you know instead of Mister Bean, it's a uh, <laughs> yeah. I forget his actual name. I feel bad. Wait, Mister Bean. Gil- it's Gilbert Godfrey. No, what? that no that, that, that that's that, that's Iago. For Aladdin. Oh, that's what I was thinking of. I was thinking okay. of Iago. Okay. So, yeah. What'd you say? Who's Rowan Atkinson? Zazu. Rowan Atkinson is Zazu in Lion King. Oh. Oh, oh man. Everything just clicked for you, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that was like a weird little triangle yeah. understanding each other. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fucking Disney birds, man. Disney Plus ad. <laughs> yeah. Hey, go buy uh, Aladdin Lion King bundle. Hmm. <laughs> Full circle. Come package for Disney Plus for five years. <laughs> Jeez. No. But yeah, so yeah, the demon bird with yeah. um with, with, with V. But V's know. cool, man. Like, so V's got a cane that he walks around with, and he can't really physically fight the way the other guys can. So when demons come out, you just hit Y to make the panther attack. You hit X to make the bird, like, spit bullets at He, <laughs> oh, he, 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 he shoots lightning. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and if you like hold it in, you can charge up that. and do lightning bolts. Yeah. He has all different lightning attacks. And then, um, and when, like once they're weakened, yeah, then you do get him to a weakened state, and the the summons that you have can't kill the enemies, so he does by fucking just kind of hitting him with the cane. Yeah, like, and like, 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 like he teleports to him, like, like Noctis would in fifteen with his swords. He teleports with his cane because his cane, his that's cane, a reference, Mac. His is. cane is, is is a blade. You kind of lost right, me right. on this game now that, with that. <laughs> it's I, I'm I'm yeah, kidding. No. I'm kidding. But yeah, but like they do all wear black though. In one, yeah. 15? Both. 15 and Devil May Cry 5. Well, I mean, yeah, for V. Yeah. Just V. Um, And then I guess you didn't get to Dante yet. No. No, no, no. I've seen Dante in the game. Like, you know, that early bit. When, when you get to that point, that's when you realize, like, for veteran players, it's like, all right, this is where the game, like, opens up. That's cool. Because he is all about variety. He's always been about variety. Yeah. So he has, like, so many styles. It's it's crazy. I'm excited. I like it a lot. I don't know why they decided to make a male version of Bayonetta, but I'm fucking digging it. You know? I mean... Well, didn't it, this come before yeah, Bayonetta? Like, <laughs> so the question is... <laughs> so that's the joke. <laughs> all right. I mean, but, but actually, when, when, the, when the Panther happened... Oh, yeah. I thought yeah. of Bayonetta immediately. But, uh... No, the, the, it's... It is good. Like the story isn't like deep. No, but it's also like. But dumb. who cares? Because it's, it's that's not the. It's fucking real like point stupid, batshit, crazy, and I'm just I'm fucking loving it. And the music, the fucking soundtrack is so good. Like if you it's don't like metal, isn't it? It's better than metal. It's, it's like, like it's, it's some of that, and then some of it's like weird techno y yeah. all right if you're wondering listener don't worry you don't have to stop listening because when we hit break you're gonna hear the fantastic <laughs> song devil trigger which i put on while i was cooking the other night performed the- last year at the game Awards. oh yeah if you recall i put it on while i was cooking the other night and katie was fucking bopping i was like hell yeah you get it did you, you hear the remix it. one which one when you're shopping 
No. Or, 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 oh. or, or, or no, no, no. It's, 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 it's soon as you finish a mission, and you hear like that slow pianoish music. You oh hear yeah. The Devil Trigger lyrics. No, you can hear that whole theme like like echoing throughout that whole game. Yeah. Um, but the opening the, remix is the one that I just keep fucking playing on Apple Music. Yeah. Like, mm. The one that's like six minutes or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's so yeah like the the voice acting is super voice acting is great the game looks great like it looks genuinely so fucking good I, I'm I'm like actually I think it's because it I think I don't know if I talked about I don't know if it was because of this that I wanted Street Fighter as the remake mm. I think after seeing this I was like you can do crazy shit with this engine man like, yeah just I, like I it. just it, it got me immediately like I kept when I wasn't playing it I was like scouring the fucking stores of like the playstation store and the xbox store like what other ca- i need more capcom like i need it, more of this re so engine where did you all play it xbox xbox because it's a uh, game pass yeah oh yeah yo it's on pc <laughs> yeah i think so right i don't know if it's on let PC. me I'll let try. me look at the new updated app here <laughs> yeah oh it, if it is cool but there is a part like I'm, i kind of want to try it with you joe when you get there but i want to try the co-op yeah how long did it take you to beat this game mark Oh. That's someone that is. Uh... I looked at Mark's playtime, so I knew for myself. Oh, I did... think it was. I don't, I don't think I even know. I can tell you. Hold on. I also played on human difficulty, which is like the easiest. It took Mark eleven hours. All right, that's doable. Yeah, like it's. Oh, I don't it... know. This is on PC. That's all right though. But I think there's only one mission that is co-op. Mm-hmm. And I think, because I think if you have the, ch- to, the choice to play at co-op, you don't have to play as all three characters. I might be wrong, but there's a mission where you have to play as all three characters that all take place at the same time. Right, right, right. Because this whole game likes to tell you at what time and day this is all happening yes. in these events. This all is happening, like, from, like, a month ago of the game, from when the game took place, to, like, half of the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's all... It's, it's... And it's crazy, but... uh. Yeah, like so, like there's a part where like the three of you split off, and you can see on the side where like the default name is the DMC crew. Oh. Whenever, whenever you're nearby a character, yeah. So I guess at the same time you could have another player playing that part. Oh, interesting. So you don't maybe have to do their part. Yeah, I sense. don't know. I could be wrong. Um, but is that the part where you texted me and said you kind of were like, Ugh. yeah, because it was kind of was like it was, I feel like I was not you weren't necessarily doing the same thing, but. This game does kind of lack some... Felt a little bit like... Uh... The, the game lacks level design. Okay. Because I, like, I, I, at first, I liked the whole city exploring kind of thing. Yeah. Even though, like, closed tight spaces isn't, isn't the greatest for this kind of game. Because, no. like, looking around is just weird. And and, yeah, and you hit the walls really wall, easily. Get a little lost. Then everything starts to get covered in all that weird, like, blood veiny tentacle stuff everywhere. And it's yeah. like, that's all you see the rest of the game. And it's hmm. like... I mean, it makes sense for yeah, the story. Yeah, yeah. But I I don't know I don't know I don't know if Devil May Cry has ever been one for variety with that kind of stuff. But uh, it doesn't take away from the game necessarily. No. But just seeing all that in that one moment and playing as all three of those characters for the thing, especially when you start having a preference for one character over another, you kind of don't want to play as the other ones anymore if they give you the choice. Yeah. So like I was trying everyone, and I, I do like Nero the most, especially for his freaking voice acting. Because it's just the way he shouts at everything, he yells at everyone. I just love it. And that uh, actually, that voice actor is um, Johnny Young Bosch, I believe. He 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 does a lot of voices for for animes. Oh, cool. And he was the second Black Ranger in Power Rangers. He was Adam. Oh, cool. Okay. So like, he just has a good, uh, good pedigree to him. That's good. No, Devil May Cry uh, Five. Buy it now. Play it now. I yeah. I, I would say like not I, on PC Game Pass. So not only on really. console. But I just found out but, the new app lets you download the PC now. Yeah, it's pretty cool, right? Just downloaded the one and a half star Rage Two on my PC. Ooh. Yeah, like the, I'll play it after after the new year. <laughs> yeah, this is the one like final uh, nail in the coffin on it. Um, then we can move on. Is a uh, coffin devil? I get it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Blood. Uh, there are coffins in the game, Born. actually. Gothic metal. And <laughs> yeah. Dude, just listen. To that. Uh, after that part was starting to feel like, Ugh. yeah, it picked up immediately, and then I realized that like, that was the final. Like boss fight, oh, yeah, which was cool. like a like a two or three parter, I guess. Oh, cool. But I was like, that moment worth it. I, Playing this game to get to that part, to get that part for the specific moment is so worth it. Like Nero just, all right, Nero shined for me right there. All right, I'm excited. Uh, I, I'm gonna try and knock it out this week. I gotta squeeze it in. I yeah. got a tight schedule. I've already dropped it's... one game on the tight schedule. Like if it's, you uh, like, and if you can't do uh, the whole thing, drop it. You can. You, well, I'll I'll talk about it. Let me, uh, let me. Yeah, I was like, if you can't get to the whole thing, 
You could probably just do the beginning, honestly, and just get a good idea of what that game is. Um, yeah, those were my two notes about a goth fan wolf hard and bayonetta with dudes. I was watching the trailer on silent when uh, you were talking about it. There was I saw a saw blade. I saw my legit weapon. From, oh, that was in there. Saw blade. Yeah, well, it looked like it, it was the the, the gothic looking chick. I know that's, that you know that helps a lot, but yeah. she had like a black leather vest, barely covered. Trish. I, 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 sure. She has she, she has she has a sword that is looks weird. It has like teeth on it. Badass. But Dante has a demon motorcycle that he splits into two. I saw that too. And I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. Shit's dope. Pull my devil trigger. <laughs> oh, it was that chick. Hold on, hold on. It's coming the back blonde? around. It, right there. Yeah, 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 that's a that, that's a sword. That looks like a sword blade, in my opinion. <laughs> it is the devil sword Sparta. Hey, while we're speaking about blood, let me pivot real quick to Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, because I beat it. Shortly thereafter, uh, we recorded last uh, week. I never say congratulations to Mark for beating the game. Oh, yeah, thanks. Well, Mark, congratulations yeah, yeah, yeah. on Devil May Cry. Joe, <laughs> well, congratulations on Bloodstain. Thank you. I believe when we recorded, I was at the final boss fighting it. You were. You said you were there, but you wanted to do some other stuff. Yeah, because like all these doors you were opening. And yeah, you know. and I kept dying at the boss, and I was like, why don't right. I just level up a bit and wander through the castle? Well, I wandered through the castle enough that I got all the materials to craft the this game's equivalent of the chrysogram. If you remember the chrysogram from Symphony of the Night, which was just OP as fuck. So I crafted that weapon. I need to play that game still. Uh, ended up just first try, went to the boss murdered <laughs> um and now i'm just kind of running through the castle i'm gonna get the platinum in this game so is this like post game just running you can just run through the castle yeah you just go back to the, it, this does one of the great things where <laughs> you have a new game plus okay so that was my next question or it's not even new game plus like it's just like a cleared state mm-hmm. but it loads you right in the save room across from the boss fight with that room already navigated you know what i mean like, so so you can do the boss fight again if you wanted yeah right? totally. so kind of zelda it kind yep. of saves you right before the final dungeon but but you also can still the, go. But because map completion is a thing in this, that map is already that. It part actually of the acknowledges room's... that you've done it. Yes. Yeah. The, the only thing about yeah. the Zelda save is it dumps you right at the front door, and navigating yeah. that world is tough if yeah. you're trying to get out. Yeah. No, that's true. They always do that. I had oh. a specific route I had to take with my twig to you... preserve my twig <laughs> for the boss fight. You think you, you think they do want to change that too? Yeah. Um. But then uh, now I'm just kind of wandering around. There's still. Some other bosses I haven't fought yet. There were optional bosses you don't need to fight. So I'm going through and fighting them now. Uh, question for that. Because like, I didn't get too far with this. I started mm-hmm. it a little bit, and mm-hmm. I think I went into Devil May Cry after this as well. But uh, I just did right after the Zangetsu fight. So I'm sure I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm like, what, 3% of that game? <sighs> um, the I know the, about the Shovel Knight stuff. Yeah. Is that that's just armor you get, or is that a boss you fight, or is it both? Have you even encountered it's- that? Yeah, I have. I don't. I can't remember. If you do get armor, I don't have that armor. Or do you like or summon him or equipped. something? So you can get him as one of the shards. Okay. Uh, but you will run into him, and it's he's just standing there, and you've, it's kind of weird that Shovel Knight's just in this game. I think that's my big like the thing walking away from this game. I'm not walking away from because I'm still I'm gonna play through it. I, like I now that I have like all this fucking power, I just want to run through that castle. It feels so good to be back in it. But I am excited for that game to have a sequel that is not kickstarted. And I know this game wouldn't have happened without Kickstarter, and obviously, it right. But is it having, weird to fight Ega? I haven't done that yet because I think it's like paid deal. Speaking of Kickstarter, but yeah, but I haven't done that. I, I figured I'd wait until I get the platinum and then I do that. But got it. Okay. Yeah. Like, just like knowing that like all these portraits on the walls are like people who kicked the game, kickstarted the that, game. That part was a little weird, right? Because yeah. it was like. Some of them looked photorealistic, and then some were just anime drawn looking. So it's yeah. like those two pictures right next to each other, just it, so it, contrasting. There's, there's a lot in this game where I'm just like, oh god, if you weren't, if if you didn't have to do all this stuff for Kickstarter backers, like what could this game? Some had that too, didn't it? In that tower, yeah, they had yeah. portraits of everybody. Yeah, but see, they put it in like one spot. It was like you, you just kind of knew this is the. Kickstarter but they all had the room. same style too. Yeah, this is like all throughout the castle. You're just running into this stuff. And it's like, mm, so are the anime people just generic people, or are they? I don't know. Yeah. Or maybe some people look like anime. You know I, what I mean? guess yeah. it might. But yeah, I I see what you mean though. Like having its own thing. Yeah. Being in its own world without having outside acknowledgement. Yeah, like just let it. Yeah, let it be. Um, because I think I don't know if any of the boss fights are necessarily that. But you know what I mean? There's just like a, mm. a a thing about this that feels like, all right, let's let's do something else. Cause like the ego thing is cool, but at the same time, yeah. It and kinda... that's totally optional. You know, like I'm kind of okay. I'm more okay with that than I am with like, 
a picture of some dude who doesn't look like he's from the 17th century like like <laughs> painted as if he's from the seven it just yeah. it's kind of along the same lines like does it bother you when you like look into like an instruction booklet for an old game and you see the game character playing their game no i love that so like they're self-aware yeah i fucking that love that <laughs> so like donkey kong playing that with super nintendo that's controller. the best I, okay. dude i've that is it I, bothers me that's one of my favorite things it actually annoys me if i see that I'm, i like light up um it just fucks in my head oh, it's good it's good stuff <laughs> um all right pokemon or death stranding Mark, you decide. Oh, God. But you let the robot decide the first time. I know. Just keep it. All right. I'm going to step in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go <laughs> Do first. It. Do it. I am, am thirsty for a nice monster energy drink. Oh, boy. Yeah. Crack it open. Oh, boy. The sweet, sweet sound of monster energy. Now that we've gotten that out of the way and that product placement, on to Death Stranding. As you know, first, I'm going to start with the minor games. Yeah. One, game I fell off of. The Outer Worlds. I know ah. exactly what that game is. Yep. Don't need to play it until yeah. the new year. Yeah. Like, I think we knew at the trailer. But even like playing it, you're just kind of like, yeah, I, I, I get it. Yeah. It, 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 I like it. I like it a lot. It's good. It just uh, November, they, they decided to put all these games out in November, and I need to play them before December. So, so many games. Yep. Yep. So uh, The Outer Worlds. Yep. Now we'll be maybe talking about that more next year. Um, I have started the first hour and a half of Jedi Fallen Order. I don't have much to say about it right now, at least like the mechanics and the open world part of it, because I feel like I'm still in tutorial mode a yeah. little bit. I'm not saying it's bad or anything, but, yeah, yeah, I, but... I'm, the mechanics are still being introduced to me. Like I just meditated for the first time, but that's where like you upgrade, and it's kind of like the equivalent of like um, lighting um, torches or uh, fireplaces in, mm. um, in like Dark Souls. Oh, got it. Okay. It's kind of like that. So, yeah. Uh, Campfire. I, yeah. yeah I, okay. I have a feeling level design is going to work like that because there, there's a there's an emphasis on using the map. And, like, the map even lays out, like, black passages and stuff right, like okay. that. So, yeah, uh, I was seeing a lot of Dark Souls comparisons to yep. this game. Uh, the, si- the fighting system is very reminiscent of Sekiro. Hmm. But with the lightsabers where, hmm. like, parrying is a big thing to take down someone's health uh, or, they'll you know, They'll just keep blocking you if you don't parry them or cool. whatever. Um, love the fact that it's go to a stormtrooper and just hit them and you're dead. Like, oh wow, that's how it's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be five hits on a single stormtrooper. Right. Uh, I just boom, and then yeah. uh, if you time laser fire at you, you're just right. You can just deflect it right back at them, which or you cool. deflect it at like. So say there's a dude in the back line and someone's charging you with one of those like like. Uh, like electric thing yeah yeah there's like those a, other like melee type cattle of prod kind of thing yeah <laughs> uh like if i deflect it just right it will hit the dude in front and then if he shoots again i'll hit the guy That's in the cool. back so um a lot of potential there i haven't really gotten a lot of force powers yet yeah um you get any god of war vibes because they got the guy from god of war the uh i think a lot of the skill tree is going to be like button combinations which was a mm. lot of what god of war skill tree was okay. so i'm kind of getting that um but like i said i i don't know how this game is going to play like map wise i don't know if i'm going to be like unlocking shortcuts like dark souls or if i'm going to be kind of in a, a hub world and it kind of goes to other places like god of war because the god of war had the lake and then you kind of went in these little ravines or these other um the whole other um realms to 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 do whatever so uh good first impressions love the combat moving around i feel like uh it's a little bit looser uncharted uh, oh, cool. it was weird they wanted me to climb on something that was red i'm so used to yellow <laughs> oh right right right, right. <laughs> i was like where do i go i was like oh it's red in this game all right and then weird. so uh there's already been variety in what you can climb on i've, I've climbed on little weeds and mm. gates so mm, right, yeah, right. a little variety in the, uh, in the color scheme right. there but yeah it's like a little refreshing not to see yellow yeah, 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 <laughs> but yeah, it's all red. It's it's just it's just a different paint. Uh, is th- th- there's lightsaber customization, right? Yes, I don't know if it like customizes damage or stuff. I, I was about to say, is it cosmetic only? Or... Uh, I think because I technically pre-ordered it like five hours before I went live or whatever. Uh, I got some premium content, but I don't. I think they're just art things. Yeah. Uh, cause I can go blue or green on the lightsaber by default, mm. but I, the premium one has an orange. I okay. see. I would have done that. I actually I, like I, orange. I'm staying true <laughs> to the Jedi way. Blue means you're still a Padawan and green means you're a master. So I'm going to keep it blue for right now. So what does the rest mean? Uh, 
fucking cool. I'm just going by what Luke Skywalker did. Because, like, Samuel yeah. Jackson had purple. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck that means. But Mace Windu died in a stupidest way in episode three, so I just consider purple <laughs> to be an idiot. Well, there you go. That whole movie's stupid, so. Yeah. <laughs> that whole trilogy's probably. Then there's just yellow and orange after that. Yeah. But, yeah, um, yeah we'll see We'll how that game goes. It looks good. Yeah, I yeah, know. It, it, it plays really well. Um. Story I, starts honestly, online. I was disappointed. You know, I don't give a fuck about Star Wars, but I was disappointed after XO 19 when they didn't announce it for Game Pass because I was like, I'd fucking play it. Like, because they opened the show with that, and I was like, they're going to fucking bring it to Game Pass. We we're sitting there watching. Like, yeah, because like, the last game to do something like this, I mean, I guess Force Unleashed, you can you can count, but I think more so to me, like Jedi Outcast or Academy is more like focused on like a whole Jedi aspect of yeah. All that stuff. Yeah, I mean, at Force, least combat. Force and Leash, they were okay games. They, they weren't my favorite. No. Uh, they were playable. It's, it, I actually played those games when PSM was out. That was like the yeah. my go to games for that. Uh, yeah. but, this looks cool, though. I, I so. No, I really like this uh, a lot. It starts off. It seems like they captured it pretty, pretty accurately. It starts off pretty well. They did a. <laughs> there's something with like action adventure games and a train chase that they just click. It, it's made. Yeah. They're made for each other because this game starts with like a train chase sequence and it's does pretty it, fucking wild. Does the train blow up? Uh eventually at the end, yes. It's it's like if any yeah. game with a helicopter It's gonna go down. Don't don't rely on yeah, it. Yeah, the, the tail's any... coming off and <laughs> yeah. it's gonna spin down. It just has to Transportation happen. just explodes. Or no, I don't know I don't know if it explodes or it's going off a cliff. Ah. Oh, it's going off a cliff well, and it you're goes sliding off down the cliff. It's and then gonna you jump blow into up. like this ship. Yeah, it's Jesus. it's it's, it's ever a good end for them it's wild but yeah i i um it was nice that the the climbing it's not as like nathan always felt a little stiff this yeah. feels a little bit more looser a little bit quicker cool. so hopefully um that will that what will is, stay that way what is the main character's name um oh shit it's a cow Ca- yeah cow cap capness cow it's sure i don't want to say cadet but i don't think that's mcdonald's right. cal ripkin it's cow though uh, but yeah, no, the main event of the week has been Hideo Kojima's Death Stranding. And? I like it. I think I like it a lot. A lot. Uh, so I, just to put it into perspective, I have gotten through chapter two. Okay. I am on to chapter three, which is like the chapter where they say the thing opens up. Uh, I played about an hour or two of that, but I don't see how it's opened up any more than it already has so how many hours total have you i think i hit my 15 hour mark okay because uh, i played it a little bit more to make sure i got to the 15 hour mark instead of playing star wars uh yesterday or whatever okay um i don't even know where to start because there there is just so much fucking shit going on story wise setting wise um i'll start with gameplay it is walking or running on steroids i like the whole leaning balancing mechanic because that's the shoulder buttons right yeah you like i like sure it in a weight distribution because it makes you put it it puts an emphasis on how much you want to carry at one time yeah there is a balancing system to it mm. so like early on in the game you have to take a body to an incinerator because it's uh, something where if a body is consumed by, I think, what's called the Death Stranding. There is something called the Death Stranding, but I'm not sure this is considered to be the Death Stranding. But it's, if it's consumed into the Earth, there would be a massive, like, it will... It'll blow up. Yeah, and there's a massive crater and all this damage and stuff. So, yeah. I'm trying to get this body to the incinerator. And, like, you're climbing because the body wobbles, not stiff cargo. You're, like, kind of all over the place. So, uh, it kind of puts a little bit of uh, emphasis into balancing. Uh, you can put all your stuff right onto your back, but you can also put it into your shoulder. So, you know, if you're like, you're running up like a crooked hill and you know, you're constantly be shifting left, you can kind of weight yourself down and shift it to the right. I think that's a little clever mechanic as you're going along. I agree. Cause a lot of adventure games are just going up hills and like none of that is taken to a factor because like in real life, if you're hiking and shit, you're going to slip and lose balance on all these weird angled rocks. But like this game actually acknowledges that stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, because of the the weight and the hills and, and stuff like that, when you get into some enemy encounters, you have to take that into consideration. You have to, like, do I do I risk it and go right past the BET, or do I try to go on this hill but, like, try to keep my balance because I'm, I'm, I'm in a shitty situation, got a lot of cargo, and I'm not moving as fast as I normally would. Plus so. you have a baby. Well, the baby helps or in BB, this instance. Sorry. BB, yes. Uh... So yeah, I I kind of like that mechanic. I 
I think later on, I hope they add something a little bit to it, but I don't have a gun yet either, so... Okay. I think you end up getting a, a weapon like that. I got some grenades, but they're not for, like, human terrorists or mules, as they're called. Mm-hmm. Um, they're more for the BTs. But uh, I will say that the BT encounters, at least very early on, where you're, like, helpless against them, are fucking terrifying. I'm, like, on edge. Um, as you're, like, walking along, you have to be super quiet because they can't see you. Right. Because they're technically in another realm. Yeah. They're all connected with the beach, and the beach is the energy that's kind of blended into the world. And there's a thing called time fall, which is rain. But if it hits you, it ages. Uh, it's Do you know what the wild. letters BT stand for? I don't think I do. All right, because I do, but I don't know if it's right. That's why I want to get there is a so there is a lot of stuff that just gets put into a codec like the first time you counter, whether it's like a tutorial thing or yeah. just some other world stuff. I'm not read a lot of that codec okay. at the moment. I'm just kind of letting the cutscenes give me the information I need at the moment, at least. Uh, have you read any emails? I've read a few, but did you have you seen the length of those emails? <laughs> yeah, the, like. From- <laughs> Yeah, there, there's a lot to it. Yeah, um, I read like two. I was like, ah, okay, I'm just going to keep fucking going. <laughs> yeah, it's like if you want to understand that game, it's in the emails probably. Because uh, right. I, I was going to ask, if did you read uh, Jeff Keighley's emails? I have not met Jeff Keighley yet. Okay. Hmm. I have that a feeling he's in the area. <laughs> I'm in somewhere now, but I have not ran into Jeff Keighley. Because I, I haven't looked it up either, but I, I'm really curious on what he says. <laughs> it's his proposal. <laughs> <laughs> um. It probably is. So, yeah, the BTs, I thought, were – I think that's a very interesting mechanic. I think they look a little goofy, but I get what they're going for because they're blending into the world. And you're not really supposed to see them. That's where the BB is coming in. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, it's navigating them. And then when you get caught by one – have you all seen what happens when you get caught by one? Um, what the fuck? There's I, a whale. I think it's the whale from Metal Gear Solid Five. It's I come back so to revisit it. Yeah. Uh, you get dragged around. It's – Wild. Oh, is that the whole scene in the trailer where he's, he's all blue? Yeah, it'd be like black. Or, like that yeah, so his, his whole like, like normal yeah, skin so color like, just changes. If, to, like, I think I was in an area where like they wanted me to get captured. Cause I, because usually you can kind of see the path, but you just have to be careful. I I did not know how to navigate it, so like I got too close to one. I got captured. And I got drug all the way around. I saw this whale come out of nowhere. I started I wonder running through like... all this goo. Yeah. Just it's it's Lugu? wild. No, it's, it's this black goo. This is like Lugu. <laughs> if he like had too much acid or something. It was, I don't know. Oh, Lugoon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So I I like the BT encounters. I have some um some uh some weaponry I can use against them now to kind of clear a path, which is cool. It uses your blood. Um, <laughs> okay. Mm. Yeah. So uh, you play a Sam Porter Bridges. That is, of course, Mr. Norman Reedus, mm. Norman Peters, whatever you want to call him. Yeah. I still haven't seen his dick. I've tried him many times. He won't let you. Hideo Kojima's done a real good job in coding <laughs> that. Um, and because he's a various thing, so he's a, I think it's called a, a, a re, 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 repatriate. Repatriate, yes. That allows him to keep coming back to life. But he's also a doom, but I don't know what he, he doom has dooms. I don't know what the fuck they are. He cries. Okay. All right, I don't think I totally understand it because I I've seen Dooms, the crying. Dooms let him detect the BTs, but he can't see the BTs, which is why he has the BB because the BB can see the BTs. But he's not really supposed to be. He's not supposed to have a BB because I think he's a doom. All right, so I played eight hours of this game. Oh, you played it too. <laughs> yes. Oh. I didn't want to tell Mark because <laughs> I figured Mark would be mad at me. No, I was I was I was just saying earlier that I was considering playing it. I know. All right. <laughs> I didn't know when to jump in. I didn't want to take it from you. <laughs> I just – I don't know. There's a lot that I don't know, and I don't know if it's in the codec, in the emails, or if I'm not supposed to know it yet because there's it, just a lot going on right now in so this game. So what I've got from this game so far is that every character has this, like, veil of mystery that they show just enough that it is meant to intrigue you into seeing what is just behind – like, what's there? Oh. And you keep reaching and you keep – looking for what is the next thing and it's like whether it's uh fucking you uh you turn on the bb and all of a sudden norman Reedus gets high on bb juice and starts seeing through the eyes of the bb mads mickelson say i'm your daddy Uh, or whatever the fuck it is like there's those little things like well who's mads mickelson and then eventually you get to a point where uh uh 
Samuel Sam Porter Bridges. You have to say his full name each time you talk to him. Sam Porter Bridges talks to dead man Guillermo del Toro and says, I keep seeing this guy. Who is he? And he's like, I don't know. How am I supposed to know who that is? Yeah, he's, like, he's just dismissing it as like, you're, oh, when you when you like jack into right. BB, like you see his memory. Is so that could just be an, it another person? It could just person. be anybody. Yeah. But it's like very obvious that like dead man knows a little bit more than he's letting on. Yeah, of course. Um, it's it's all of that. And you're like slowly unraveling it a little bit. But And then you're working for this company. So I was like getting through the gameplay, but like we can jump into like what we're what, – going on like you work for a company bridges but that's because your associate like your mom ran it yeah she dies yeah and then amelie your, your sister, sister but- is trapped out west by a terrorist group but the terrorist group lets her communicate back to the east yep so you're now on you're pretty much the game is you trekking out west to go find her and get her and bring her back like Break her out and bring her back. Because her east. whole big thing is that she wanted the world to be united again. Because now the United Cities of America are completely everyone's separated. Everyone is whatever mm-hmm. torn apart and blah blah blah. And the whole point of him is to try and slowly reconnect humanity by doing all these using things. the Carl Network. But the, the Carl right. Network harnesses like the beach's energy, and the beach is probably what's caused the entire issue of the world with the Death Stranding and all of that. Yeah. There is a lot of Woo! there's a lot of allegory in this. There's a lot of metaphor in this game. Like there's so much of that stuff. There's a lot that you can start to infer about like Kojima's personal life from this stuff. You know what I mean? Like there's all these things and these elements and these themes that pop up. And like for me so far, the gameplay loop has been get a task to take some shit from here over there. You walk over there. You hope that you don't run into any BTs or any mules. And if you do, you deal with them. Heavy. How you yeah. deal with them? Um, did not really like the mule combat at the all. Mule, I was going to get there. The mule combat, they don't feel threatening at all. They don't, well, it's not, so, all right. The, the one time I interacted with them, um, I kind of ran in and they just all ganged up on me. Like yeah. seven of them came. Um, but otherwise you just walk up behind them and punch them in the back of the head and they turn around. And I don't like the way it feels either. Cause you hit square to punch. But, like, time slows down, and the camera zooms in as he punches each time, and, like, it just... It's it's when, good. like, the... Well, not necessarily the death blow, but I guess the knockout blow, or when, like, they're... I guess it's emphasizing that whatever they're carrying has been knocked off of them. Yeah. Uh, it's you, you know, it's it does not it cool great. Them. Devil May Cry does it pretty nice. Yeah, it does. Like your final move of any combo is just... It, and that's, I, I, <laughs> like, you know, it's... It's hard to jump from Devil May Cry to combat like this because yeah. combat's not the focus of this, but it's still just like... Yeah, it's just- but to be fair, Kojima's never had the greatest close quarter combat in yeah. games. Like, this and, is... And to be fair, this is not that game. Like, you no. you were really yeah. only overtaking the mules just to get them out of the way. Um, the BTs, the, the combat that... Well, there's no combat, but it's that, like... All right, well, now I got to crouch and I have to hold R1 to hold my breath. And it's that, like, that game you play with yourself of... Is this a safe spot for me to let go and fucking take a breath real quick? You know, or... can I get can you get a sip of that monster energy drink so I can All right, refill so my stamina? So the fucking monster energy drink. We got to talk about this because it's so stupid. Oh, I it's fucking... fine. No, I love it. Uh, okay. <laughs> the, all right, hold on, hold on. Here's the gameplay loop for the entire game I've played so far. Get a, Someone says you need to take this to this place. You go walk to that place. You either run into BTs and mules or you don't. The mules don't have until a little bit later, but... Once you get to said place and you deliver said package, and also along the way, you might find other people's packages that they've dropped or lost. And a lot of those early ones are like tutorialized ones. Later on, you actually do find fucking, it'll say Matty Ice 131 underneath, right? It'll be Matt's thing um, that you can pick up and, and keep carrying so you both get XP. Um, I'm glad that you just chugged the rest of that monster because we're coming to that real soon. I'm trying to get to that insight. Of like, how once, the fuck can you do that? Once you get to the <laughs> place, right? The first time, or not first, but you get there and you, you end up, you go to this private room. You have Norman Reedus has a, sorry, Sam Porter Bridges has a private room. <laughs> and every time you load into the private room, there are like five cans of fucking Monster Energy drink with his sunglasses on the table. Which is why I brought these Monster Energies down here and put sunglasses uh-huh. on the table. Yeah, there you go. I mean, and, the cans understood with sunglasses. That's what touch. Oh, so you haven't gotten the Bridges hat yet. No, I get the, of course oh. I got the Bridges hat. No, I'm just making sure because the Bridges hat is also there. Yeah, the Bridges hat. <laughs> I almost <laughs> ordered that before the game came out. Not oh, going to lie. So <laughs> you go there, and every time you get – so the first time – oh, sorry. Every time I go there, the first thing I do is just chug every can of Monster that's on the table. 
Um, it doesn't do anything while you're sitting. I mean, it, does, it refills I mean, your it refills your stamina and health stuff. But you're already it's it gives already you like it's already, you the room, it gives you like right. what a twenty five percent boost to, to like your endurance or stamina. Or whatever. That's when you're in the field. Like it'll oh. it'll refill. And here's the f- so I'm running in the field carrying shit, and it goes and and he's running and he says, uh, <clears throat> "Goddamn cotton mouth." <laughs> and I was like, "All right, whatever." I, I just keep going, and like God. within four minutes. <clears throat> goddamn cotton mouth and i was like all right well he said the same canned line twice now what is am i supposed to drink all right hit right on the d-pad grab the canteen drink the whole canteen and then on the left hand side text pops up on the screen that says one monster energy drink consumed and i was like jesus fucking grace canteen's got monster in it okay sure and then it pops up with a little overlay to let you know don't worry even though you just consumed your monster energy drink any interaction with water or rain will then refill your monster energy drink it will purify the water so that it can become monster energy drink in the like mo- it, idiocracy fucking the rain that like, it's makes got you... what plants crave yeah the time fall or when you're wandering through a river it, that, it's like, all makes you age or whatever yes you interact with that, that it'll your canteen will purify it so it can become drinkable monster energy drink that's a good canteen but it's that thing of like, uh, I know. Uh, it's like, is it social commentary? Is it that thing so, where like everyone drinks this and thinks that it's water and they sh- like, is what is, why is monster energy drinking this fucking game? I, don't I hope there's it. a, I, I hope there's an email about it, but up until last night, uh, I saw a tweet from Kojima uh, where he was asking people who more, more specifically, um, people in like in like the movie industry or like people who just like love going to the movies or like actors or whoever, like people who don't really play video games. Yeah. He was like asking if they were enjoying this game because of what it is, and I th- then and then that got me thinking that this game wasn't just for us. This is for people who don't play video games as well to try to bridge that gap oh, between oh, that, that is a tough ask of this between, game because this is. game well, is be, no, well, as fuck I know, yes. but between cinema and games because that's why he has all these actors in it and they're all like you know they're probably all friends in some degree they're all connected in some way so using that as a way to make some type of pedigree to like get get that attention from the movie field so i don't want to get too sidetracked here with that but like if he wanted a game to do that you should refer not. people to Metal Gear Solid 4 because i feel like i watch more, more cutscenes yeah. than i play the but actual like, game can you access that easily now nah, no get a ps3 used or something but I no it's, no it's digital on ps4 i think is it i think so i think i brought it up but uh, you, it just, play, it, you play everything yeah, else yeah, in front of it, but i don't know, just, it, it made me think no, I, yeah, for sure. He's definitely doing it. But, so, after that, every time you go back, then Nicholas Winding Refn wants you to take a shower. He just really wants you to take a shower. And, because mm. that, like Matt said, washes Your all the blood fluids off and turns it into grenades. weaponized, yeah. And my favorite part is that, so, the one time, it seemed like they wouldn't let me leave until I showered, peed, and, or I'm sorry, showered, bathroom stand up, and bathroom sit down. And only when I did bathroom sit down did the doors close and it shows the animation or it shows the fucking Norman Reedus bicycle or fucking ride. Bicycle, mo- yeah, the motorcycle AMC show. And it's like, is there, noise? it didn't, no, no. it like, you so, never hear him. Like when you shower, the way the camera plays out, like the camera follows him into the shower from like waist up. You see like a top of crack and then right. he's showering and it just kind of stays on his chest. And then uh, Guillermo del Toro starts talking to him while he's showering and he gets mad. Uh, if you pee, it just kind of goes like near the shoulder, like it's it's right up mm. close on him or whatever. But, but when, when you shit, when he's bathroom sit down, when he's bathroom sit down, you never hear like any little farts come out. Little like, no, you don't hear <laughs> that. No, because someone's talking to you. Someone's always talking to Sam Porter Bridges. But then the things close. Not and every there's time. A, I know, but there's then there's a big poster of Norman Reedus's AMC fucking motorcycle yeah. show. Um, that said, before I'm gonna kick it back over to you to to drive it home. I'm out. Oh, you're done. Where, I'm out. Where did you get to? So I'm about halfway through chapter two, and I'm out. I, so did you? Man, deliver, I really want to say keep going. But... Did you go to the uh, wind farm? No. So here's why I'm out. I'll tell you why I'm out. I didn't want to play it at all. I was having fun with everything I was having fun with, and then I was telling Katie about Devil May Cry as we were listening to Devil Trigger, and she was like, "So hold on, you can play as three different characters, but..." How many of them are Norman Reedus? I don't think you got to drop this shit now. 
She was like, you got to drop this bathroom, sit yeah. down right now. And she was like, how come you're not playing that game? And I was like, it looks, it sounds bad. Like everything I've heard around it is not, doesn't seem like it's for me. And she's like, ah, oh, you should play it. And uh, our friend Tyler Block has been playing it as well. So he's texting me about it. I And I was like, all right. Mark and I have been going back and forth, like, what the fuck is I li- this game? I listened to a whole spoiler mood. Yeah, we were like... Thing. And actually, now I do want to play it. <sighs> we, now that I know everything. <laughs> but, so I was like, alright, I'll fucking... So I jumped in, and I played it the one night, and I was like... By the end of the first night playing it, I was like, this is, I'm, I'm in. I'm, this is... I'm in. Uh, second night, I, like, played nothing, and then... By the third night, I'm, like, pushing eight hours into the game, probably, and... Like, that... The game loop for me is where I, I don't like I don't like the walking like early on in the game walking sucks and you're like this sucks mm-hmm. so then they give you ladders and ropes to make traversing the world a little bit easier but then that's it like there's not you don't start getting vehicles at all until much later like I've walked up someone left a fucking vehicle outside of a building and I was like thank fucking god yeah, you need the and I walk up there's... and it's like fucking squares yeah, you can't out. you can't get the generator until you turn on the wind farm. And the I'm wind like, farm is a fuckery to get to. And that's what it right. So then there's like, other ways too. But you you like the balance part. For me, I'm just holding L2 and R2 the whole time and just fucking walking as quickly as I can in the well, direction you can't I gotta go. In. Go as fast if you're holding it the entire time. No, but I also don't have to worry about fucking. <laughs> <laughs> you still you know? do. Like if you stack high enough on your back, you still. Have to... Oh, I know. I had it at one nineteen point eight out of one twenty kilograms on my back, and I'm running through BT fields. Like I gotta get the fuck up do there. Do you love how you just you can only reach just above your head to put a suitcase on your back, but yet somehow it stacks to be like eight feet above uh, you? I I stopped uh, checking that game's logic after fucking <laughs> Leah Sado vanished into thin air after saying "See you soon, Sam Porter Bridges." Everyone says his fucking name. Oh, there's an explanation for that. I how much I've there is. Uh, so I am out of that first part. I am like on to the Great Lakes. Okay. So that's where the break from chapter two to chapter three happens, yeah. and the end of chapter two introduces you to your first boss fight, which it it felt Metal Gear. Like that's I was cool. like, I all right. Because I was starting to get like you, I was like, "All right, this is like it. I'm just like, what is the st- the story's not picking up anymore? Am I like traversing this? Am I doing this exact thing all the way across the fucking west? And then is that where chapter three is? Because chapter two is called Amelie. So I was like, uh, am I getting to Amelie and then switching right, over? Right. Thankfully, you get through that first area, and then you go now to the to the great, um, pretty much like the Great Lakes area. Yeah. Um, and that is more terrorist driven there's a lot more at stake like you okay. you know like the mules really in like two areas yeah. they're kind of like everywhere now all right so you're traversing that um there's a lot more th- my main objective is to kind of go to these um oh uh, they have a name but it's pretty much like these people that aren't associated with the bridges or uca and it don't want to be mm. so like you're trying to go to them to like put them onto the carl network or have them join the uca and they're like i don't know about you but you did them a favor so they're like, all right i'll do something um, so I've been doing a lot of, a lot of that here and it seems to be like they're a little bit closer, uh, together. Uh, like I said, the mule and the terrorist stuff isn't great, but yeah. I did feel threatened for the first time when I saw like a van driving at me. I was like, Oh shit. All right. All right. Yeah. Let's, 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 we gotta, we gotta roll. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a lot more of those sensors around for the terrorists. You know, yeah. like when you get to one, it pings them where your location is. Yeah. If you got a uh, good cargo. Uh, so there is picking up a little bit. I am going towards a crater for the first time, and I've seen it marked cool. as a BT field. So I'm like, all right, yeah. let's see. And that's the next thing. Like now that I have a weapon against the BTs, what? It's it's kind of easy now. So what's the next evolution? Like, is there one I can't see at all? Is yeah. there like ones that can like they're they can hear you like if you're not careful yeah. or like I think I need the next evolution now of BTs. Now that the terrorists have kind of upped their game a little bit. Hmm. Uh, if not, though, the BT areas are becoming a little too easy. Because all they really are, when you look at it, is just like a pair of BTs. And if you throw one grenade, it disperses them. And you just kind of go through. Yeah. Uh, and grenades and even are without grenades, like you just crouch and slowly move through. And when your little thingy on your shoulder Some starts Some of them are crazy, harder. No, it definitely is. There was one where I thought I was good. That definitely wasn't good. Uh, but you were right. That one earlier, they that's a tutorialized capture. By the because I had that too in the woods. And, oh no! Oh uh, no! I got my first capture in going to the wind farm. 
because you're going through like woods and oh. there are like trees in your way like oh yeah so and the can't. bts are like everywhere and you're like oh because i had one early and like uh that was when like the bb got all fucked up and i had to take him back so that heart man or uh <sighs> die hard man? dead man oh could yeah die hard man's one person and dead, <laughs> dead man's a different one heart man is a different one um, you, you mess with that fragile express lady more in chapter three because yeah. you're kind of working for her. That makes sense. Do you um, want to work for me, Sam Porter? Briggs? And then, um, Troy Baker is in the game as well. Yeah. Which, yeah. yeah. You've seen him briefly, yeah, but he, first, he yeah. kind of unmat not unmatched, but he kind of, you figure out some motives yeah. going on with him into chapter three. And that's the thing about all this game, right? Like all of the characters are super intriguing and you want to know more about them. There is a general curiosity they had not that I had that was keeping me excited to come back and see what was going on. It's all boring. And I mean that not in like, this game's fucking boring. I'm not being super dismissive. I mean, like, literally, it's boring. Like, it's all the characters feel like they're whispering the whole time. The gameplay is boring. You're just walking and whatever. And again, I know boring is a very negative connotation. It's just like that is what the game is. The game is not these big spectacle moments, these big explosions or anything. Like, it is generally just a passive game that you're just kind of wandering through and experiencing these things. But that's I couldn't stop. Like I was excited to go see what the next thing it wanted me to walk to was. Like I, when I say boring, I don't mean it in like a damning way. Like right. that, it it is intentionally boring. Yeah, it's you know, and like the cutscenes, like big moments that happen, like early on like they're they're still they kind of like just fall flat and, and again i know what i'm saying sounds like i'm being like dismissive but like it's like there's these things that technically should have an emotional impact but because of the way that sam porter bridges reacts to them it's like you don't really you know what i mean like the one the the body you have to carry right like that whole thing like is you feel an impact like the way the music kicks in the camera p- pulls back mm-hmm. and all of that but like he never fucking shows any emotion about it you know what I mean? Like, so his reaction to things in the world kind of softens your own reactions to or how you think you should react to things. So it ends up like... But I think that's his character. I think, like, he sees I, but, some shit. Yeah, but then you, but you're seeing the game through that character's eyes. So the narrative changes in, in such a way where it's like, you feel like you don't necessarily need to... Not that you don't need to care. You know what I mean? But I, you, I mean, I probably wouldn't react right away. It'd no, but like... Some time. So I don't know if that's his case. But. It, but but I think also just like he's very just like I'm a porter, right? Like he just – he wants to be a fucking porter. He just wants to pick up shit and go and that's – Yeah. That's all he knows and that's all he does. So you kind of fall into that where you're just like I'm just going to do – you know what I mean? Like I'm just going to keep working. I'm just going to keep – I'm going to pick up the shit and I'm going to walk from here to over there and that's what I'm going to do. And like – Because it, it was, wasn't it like he didn't want to be involved with like – any of that stuff and then he just kind of got like thrown onto him yeah a little little bit yeah so yeah he just wanted to be like a hermit i Um, guess (laughs) but for me so that was my thing right like i i was curious about it because of all the all the buzz around it it's 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 very generating buzz right um i also didn't want us to walk into a game of the year situation in a month where matt is the only one who's played this you know what i mean where i was like yeah i didn't want to have a red dead moment where i'm like that's you, also why I was doing like as much research as I could. Me I, too. I didn't yeah. want to be ignorant to any of it. Me them. too. And but because you were so high on Red Dead last year, and I played that first like little bit, and I was like, I'm out. So this, I wanted to at least like feel it a little bit. And now that I have like, I look a week from now, I could be like, ah, I kind of want to see what's going on. But I, I'm like, mm, mm. It's, it's funny you bring up Red Dead because the first. So I, I kind of been hearing because I couldn't avoid it in Nashville. Like I, I couldn't. I played like two hours of it before I went to Nashville that night. I kind of did what I wanted to. I slept till midnight, got up, played a little bit, and then I was dozing off during a cutscene. I was like, I, I got to get out before whatever. So I played a little bit of it, and I, I kind of started to realize like, oh, got to get to chapter three. You got to get to chapter three. If you can make it to chapter three, that's, that's where. It, yeah. yeah. So playing it after hearing that, I realized it's the red dead redemption 2 for me all over again except it's a little bit of a twist instead of it being the characters that are driving me forward because in red dead remember there's this infamous or not infamous but this famous podcast where i was here probably a year ago where i was like oh my boys um lenny yeah the john right. uh who's the bad guy um shit dutch dutch, dutch yeah. yeah i was said buck 
<laughs> I was, you know, I was all gung ho about hanging out with the gang. The story I could yeah. give two shits about it, but I just wanted to see what but the next interaction know, like, was. Yeah, but you know how it's going to end too. Yeah, but like this game, it maybe is not like Amelie. Like it's she's fucking weird, probably, but she's not the one. Like I'm yeah. not determined to go see her. Right. It's the setting around it, like. Time fall and the Death Stranding, and then in that early cutscene, there's this big fucking dude who yeah, yeah. out of the earth. It's like, what the fuck is that? Like, am and I, I still have, have all of those questions? Thing? And it 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 doesn't feel great that I'm like walking away from it right now. But I also am like, <sighs> for but now, I will say, but now like now I need the game to do something, and there's a plot developing at least with a couple characters. Yeah, I need that. I need it to do something now because the intrigue. I'm starting to learn the setting i'm starting to learn what happened and if yeah. i don't if kojima doesn't keep dangling that big carrot in front of me if i grab the carrot i think i'm out and that that's the thing with this it's like i think that's the that is this whole game is the carrot on the that's a perfect analogy for this is like the carrot on the string is death stranding and it's like you just got to figure out if you really like carrots or not and if you don't See, I think I do. I think I like this carrot. I I thought I did too, because it's like dipped in chalk a little bit. You know what it means? Like crying a little bit. Why does he cry so fucking much? I don't know. That's it's like the Dune thing. I think I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, the connection to the beach, and it's fucking. I'm weird. just gonna say for anybody who's listening and hasn't played this game yet, it might be curious, and you maybe you're one to check out trailers. If you haven't checked them out yet, do not check out any of the character trailers, because from what I'm hearing, they spoil a lot. Especially yeah. towards Endgame, and I think that launch day trailer, the launch trailer, that's probably the game, only one you can watch. Oh, I thought this. I thought that had a lot of. Oh like, no, launch day. Sorry, yeah. I meant like the very first trailer that they ever showed. No, you yeah, can probably watch that yeah. one. But like, yeah, any of these like more character focused yeah. ones, they like, don't just don't watch. Yeah, them. like the one for Mama. Like I saw that. What was the one yeah. they showed at? Um, and like one Games? for God, uh, the one that the one that Jeff Keighley was at Gamescom. Yeah. Yeah. They show that one there, and I like I've spoken to her twice through Kodak, so like I know I run into her. It's just where is she at? What part right, of yeah. the world? I think is there she was in? one for like I'm not sure if it was Dead Man or Die Hard Man, but like there's a big part that is like you don't want to you want you don't want spoiled, and they for some reason they show that, so hmm. I would avoid it all at all costs. But I mean, look, I went into this known as a Hideo Kojima game. I played the Metal Gear Solid series. I don't. Like I, if you kind of go in with that mindset as well, like knowing this is a Hideo Kojima game, yeah, and I and uh, you're, I think you're much that much better playing his other stuff because yeah. you you know what to expect. I knew I know the da- the carrot's going to dangle in front of me until some big twist or world event happens. I just had to know if there was like somewhat of a decent payoff for this game in order for me to like. That was the thing that I had heard. I won't say too much because I've just heard so much of this. But that was the thing that I kept hearing from people who had beaten it was like. By the time you get to the end of it, you're basically where you were when you started. Like the the messages in the game that they're trying to give you are the same messages you kind of got at the beginning. Yeah, and that it, you know what I mean. Like, I guess I'm more looking for like the finer print of like character details and stuff like that. Yeah, not, not so much. And the, I'm sure the, the stuff's there. The it was just point. like, do I want to spend? Because that was the other thing too. Is the time that was what turned yeah. me off from the game initially? Why I didn't start it after when you were starting it was everyone saying it takes about fifty to sixty hours to beat. I was like, do I want to spend 50 to 60 hours for this? You know what Some I mean? of the sentiment is parallel with my original views on Breath of the Wild. Yeah, right? And it's like, you know. But... I can tell you, I haven't been doing a single side thing. Like, when you get to... Yeah, because I had heard that Chapter 3 thing, too, and I was like, fuck it, just go, just go. Well, I'm even in Chapter 3 now, and, like, I, there's, there is a thing to do with the people you're going to because some people are like nah i'm not joining the cairo network and then die hardman comes up he's like "Eh, you should probably get him on the cairo network right right, right. and so like i think it wants you to do this other deliveries to like get you know get them to trust you or do whatever and then there's two stages to it like one of them would just join the bridges network to get the cairo network but then they won't join the uca and there's different perks depending on what contract they want so it's like you know, they I, I at least got them the Cairo network, but if I need them in the UCA, now I'd do a couple Actually, more things. So, yeah, uh, I I like it. I actually really like it a lot. But I am starting to get to that point. I was like, all right, give me something. What's yeah. what's the next evolution of this game? Because uh, I I can tell you tell you what November's tight, and I've already had to drop one game that I really look forward to. Yeah. There's another two that I need to get through. There's a number two in a game that I still need to beat before a number three comes out next week. Well, come on. Don't don't get ahead of yourself. 
You know, I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> I think that game's coming. <laughs> I don't know, man. I Sandeep, want the physical copy. <laughs> Sandeep sent me a screenshot of his uh, his Kickstarter backer things. He's like, your copy's on the way. And I was like, I, don't, I wouldn't fucking believe that until you have it in your hand. It's in the fucking console. Um, so, Death yeah. Stranding. Um, there will be more of this. Yeah, this, I want to see game, how it develops. This game I'm not going away from me. I'll I'm genuinely curious week, about it. I just I don't. I don't think it's for me in the end. Maybe, I don't know. Keely's emails, man. Keely's emails. Now I'm going to play Devil May Cry 5. Still want to play Disco Elysium. Oh, don't shake your head. I Why? thought, I, if I had a PC, I, I, would, I would consider trying it for sure. Oh, good. I'm glad he's here. You know, he wasn't here last night when I got home from work. He's trying he, to cut through the death train. He wasn't here all morning. I was kind of worried he wouldn't show up for our podcast, but thankfully he's over there. Gr- Talk How? about bathroom sit down. Can I, uh, I need a break. Yeah. I need to refill. I need to go out, <laughs> get some rainwater. Yeah. And create some monster energy. Purify that rainwater. I and then we'll to... come back. We'll talk about Pokemon XO19 and, uh, answer an email after this. Song of the year. I'll tell you what, right there. Uh, we'll let that one fade <laughs> out for you as we get back in it. Before Pokemon, Mark, you played a little bit of Control as well. Is that right? I did. Oh. Yes. Nice. Surprise. Surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> Lots of surprises. I'm really surprised you didn't know I played Death Stranding because I kept seeing all the things pop up in the feed, like the activity feed on PlayStation. Oh. I was like, Matt's going to catch yeah, me. Yeah, I wouldn't have known because I don't touch my PlayStation. <laughs> I knew I'd be fine with you, but I was worried about Matt. So like, just... all my notifications for PlayStation have been turned off just because we use my PlayStation to record FCW. Uh... So like, I can't even see when anyone pops on or when I get a trophy now anymore. And like, I wasn't sure if anybody would see my Xbox feed because I'd done a lot of screenshots for Control. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, mess I don't with, pay attention, man. I was messing I was with like, that photo mode. <laughs> consoles do way too much than they need to. I just want to, you know, know, just launch the app. I think Sometimes right, right. Xbox make that, makes that a little bit harder than these two. But. Yeah. Anyway, Control, newest game by Remedy. Yeah, um, I'm not too far in it. I'm, I'm on mission four. So, I've got, I mean, even, but but from the, it, it's like right after the main override or whatever to like give me access to everything now. Right, okay, yeah. Um, so I had, to, I had to go to like the maintenance level for everything and navigating that was fun. Uh, I, th- I think that was my only issue with the game because I spent in, like almost an hour, just like backtracking. That, but not 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 necessarily backtracking. It was like I just I couldn't find this room that I had to get to. Yeah. So I was That's... trying to I was trying to use the signs, and sometimes the sign was leading me there. Sometimes it wasn't leading me there, and then it was just. But it was in the end, it was a user error. No, it wasn't Mm-mm. because I didn't. Know it wasn't. Bad UI. Well, it, it's half and half for this because because there there was an elevator. You're too you're being too nice. Yeah, you should you should well, never get lost. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I was lost, but I also assumed that this one elevator I saw was the same elevator that I saw before when it was in fact a different elevator. But I I would have known that had I went into it. I never went into it, so I didn't know it was a different elevator. And that's what, and that's the whole time. That's all I had to do. I love this game to death. You're being too nice. All right. Don't I'm just, hate the player, hate the game. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying for that mission, whatever. Re- I re- know. Re- the re- re- rest of the game, I can see why that navigation is an issue because that map is not. Yeah. The I'm, maintenance all part there? is like one of the worst areas, though. So yeah. like, hopefully, once you get through that, I mean, like map wise and traversal. Yeah, I mean, I mean like, like I'm out of it now because I did the cooling stuff, I did the heat room, whatever. But it was just like go go to the main control room. And I was yeah. like, where the fuck is it? And I was like, oh okay, it's this elevator. But yeah, like. Whatever, it, th- that was my only gripe. Everything else, though, I love it. Yeah, dude, grab like a chunk it still feels here. Yeah. <laughs> like I lo- like I like I was telling Joe before. There's something about like abandoned office buildings just gets me, and I ju- I just love like being enveloped in it. I love like looking at every little detail and like snooping through everything. Like I'm reading every single file I pick up, even yeah. if it's like pointless. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm watching every video. I'm doing every phone call, you know, with, with the board. Uh, I am just soaking it all in. And I, and 
I think that's what really that's what I really enjoyed about Alan Wake, and more so the fact that he's a writer. You get to get that insight of him writing a book and seeing that come to life, and he has to fight it. And um, and then, yeah, with this, like uh, uh, upgrading through different abilities, the gun is really cool. That's uh, one of the most unique things I think I've can seen. Can you in a take video cover? Game. Do you get that ability at all? Because um, I feel like they should have had you that. You can crouch. It doesn't do that thing of like snapping. Yeah, snapping. Sna- yeah, it I, snap. I was kind of hoping for a snapping. It does uh, what Mass Effect and Drama to try to do, but you know, it actually worked. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not a big deal. Like, I'm fine without it, but I was just kind of waiting for that to happen sometimes. Yeah. But I was like, okay, I'll just, I'll just crouch. It's fine. I'll just, whatever. Um,. I don't have, of course, I don't have everything. I can, I can do like the, the quick dash. I can throw shit and just like push people. I don't have like flying or anything. But uh, flying's late game. Yeah. yeah, I figured. And I only have like, um, the, the first mod is the grip, right? And then, you, and I think I've, I think I've spread. Those it's a spreader? Though, no, it's, it's called shatter. Uh, Shatter's a shotgun. Yeah, one, right? that sounds right. But I honestly, some of that. the stuff with the gun. It doesn't always let you know when you're ready for an upgrade. You know no, what I mean? yeah, like, like you, you, every time I go to a control point, I have to. But like, I went in and it had hook. been like, I had unlocked a lot of possibility and didn't. I completely missed it. And I was running around with just a standard ass gun and like the one upgrade. I, and I was like, the way oh that's... shit! I had this the whole time. Like, I could have done it so long ago, but uh, okay. they didn't like really push that on you to like, hey, you have a new thing. Yeah, I, I've been more proactive about it, so I've just been constantly looking at everything. Because I was um, way more into the telekinetic abilities than I was the actual gun. No, like, for sure. Any of those opportunities I had. Dude, just grabbing like, a chunk from a wall and just, oh, like, so just flinging it at people is yeah. such a satisfying feeling. And, uh, it, like, like running around in that game is nice. Like, the, the sprinting. Yeah. I love that she doesn't go out of breath. Yeah. Like, usually in games, she's, like, she's a bad there's man. that, yeah. Because, like, so, like, some games, like, you won't slow down, but you'll hear your character panting, and yeah. that makes me want to slow down. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, I feel bad. <laughs> but, like, no, it's like, she don't give a fuck. She'll she just, just keep going through. Norma Rita just needs a little bit more monster energy, and then... <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to have switched to Cinnamon Coke and not Monster. Uh, I've switched it back <laughs> to beer. There you go. But it's secretly Monster Energy because I have the special powers. Right, yeah, you've um, to make purified it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. Uh, the going through like the menu stuff, or, like going with all the different files and everything, looking at everything. I love how that's all categorized and organized. Or whatever. Yeah, no, like, they do a really good job. That's very clean. Yeah. Um, it's like, it's like, I don't want to say minimalistic, but in a way, it. I guess it, no. It, it, there's definitely that approach with the art design. It's just good UI. Nothing, yeah, like, like like nothing feels except the map. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like, like nothing feels complex or like overwhelming. No. For a game which I was expecting a lot of that from, and I don't know, they just did a good job of carrying everything along. Like, I thought the live action stuff was going to take me out of it for some reason, but it doesn't. Uh, it's, like, that, that's cool. I Please just... tell me your favorite character is the janitor. Uh, oh, uh, Ati? Yeah, that dude fucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, the, the, that's the thing. Like, as somebody who actually has that kind of background... I think that's why I like a lot of this game because I have like that like janitor mindset where I go into every room and look at every little thing, make sure I'm not missing anything. Like, yeah, like visiting every room, like it doesn't feel like a chore, which yeah, is like, weird because you think yeah. it would be, but like it usually is. Right, like in any other game, this would be like wow. But I don't know. I, I love it. Uh, the floating bodies. Yeah, they're cool. floating yeah. bodies freak me out in a good way. And, like, that really stands out to me because I just know how un- unnatural that is. So it just, like, sets that atmosphere for me. And, like, it's just hitting that perfect in this setting. I know, like, and it's, like, everywhere. So, like, I'm okay with that. I don't think I'm going to get burnt down on seeing that. So it's a, it's a nice little decoration to have in this office. Oh, you know, just let's just throw some people up here. I do feel bad for killing some of them because I did it at first. No, it's no, okay. First. There's, like, a thing, the, the, I mean, there's a scene where you try to save them and it's like, oh, no, you can't do it. That, that person's gone. And I was like, oh, no. Yeah, they're already dead. They're fine. I mean, but they're also, like, not hiss. Yeah, but they're also not human. Are they? Yeah, their they're minds are scrambled eggs at this point. Yeah, they're point. basically dead. But so you can't, you just can't, even, like... There's, like, no saving them. Yeah. You just shoot away. You're fine. Yep. Okay, so I didn't know, like, <laughs> I didn't know, like, end of the game, they would be like, oh, plop. No. Uh, that was a weird that day, game huh? Does some, that, <laughs> that game does other things at the end of the game. Which okay. I, one thing I liked and the other thing I didn't like. I still gotta, I'm, like, right So, there. like, you beat it. I beat it. Yeah. You're at close to the end. I would say because I know there's probably like probably seventy five percent. So I know there's there's twenty eight missions. Did you do the maze? The oh the ashtray maze? No, I gotta get to that. 
I think I'm close to it. And I didn't run to any of the threshold kid stuff yet. I'm looking for it. But the I one haven't. I think like the one's kind of hard to miss. I feel like yeah, the one they really let you find it, but the rest of it you. I found find. one more, and that was it. I don't. Yeah, know I don't many. think I found anything more than that original one. Hmm. hmm. But yeah, yeah. I don't. Know, just, I, I I really do like this game. Like I was actually playing this while playing Devil May Cry. And I was like, ooh, I should finish Devil May Cry for sinking more time yeah, into yeah. this because no, I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. But, but yeah. yeah, there's something about Control. It was like, right, playing Death Stranding, right? The Codex stuff. I'm like, I don't feel like reading this. The emails, they're a fucking yeah. mile long. It's like, what the fuck? But for some reason, it, the, these this, documents. This is cool. We got all the it, like, confidential it's all, stuff. It's all confined. It. Yeah, like mm-hmm. it's all themed. It's all in this one place. It's not random. Yeah. I mean, I know the reader's random emails in Death Stranding from all different people from different walks of life. It's not yeah, all under on your connection link with that place. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot. There's a lot and it's, going yeah, there. it's not all under one company. I think having it all in one, having having everything take place in one building kind of helps uh, simplify everything. So it's a little better to like take in. And so it's, yeah, it doesn't it just doesn't feel as overwhelming. And it, and it is optional. You don't really need it. I feel. But it does help build I, I that mean, atmosphere. Like, like all, yeah, like all those games that do that, right? Like it's gonna fill in some minor holes or or whatever. Yeah, yeah like, and maybe that's maybe why I didn't completely understand the end of that game when you get there. We'll talk yeah. about that more when we all sure. get there. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sure there was probably a piece of piece of literature somewhere around that would have helped. But yeah, and that whole roadmap for the for the DLC is what really got me wanting to play this more, especially the last part of it yeah Yeah. the unknown but we think we know like i have i have to know i have to know like that that's been my driving force but initially now i'm just actually invested into this game i like the character i like the way that i like the way she thinks to herself while talking to everybody i can't trust this person this is what i'm here for (laughs) yeah but like but but i love that i love that she's not uh out loud talking to herself like like there's there's there, mm-hmm. like like for example you know death stranding mm-hmm. i mean that's not the only game that's done this but like there's a lot of games where the character you were like, the character will talk to them to themselves but they're actually hinting at you to do something right. she like oh uh, i forgot i forgot her name in this already um jesse hayden jesse yeah and like she, she's not standing there and being like oh i should i i, sh- I should check out this room and it's just like, yeah. no, she doesn't have to say that. It's just there's a point on the map you just go to it. But when she's talking to somebody, I love that extra monologue but she's also in not. her head because it's like that's how you would kind of. But, but it also plays into the thing. Really, she's talking to you, you but quote you. So right. I, don't, I don't know who quote you was referring to just uh, yet. And right. that's that's I love that. Yeah, it's it's definitely unique for me. Yeah, um, I, I got to I got to wrap that one up at some point. Um. You yeah, have to at least play the ashtray in these. It's I'm gonna be, I'm close enough the, to beat it. I can knock that out and probably. It's probably a day. one of the more unique things I've played. Is that like towards the end? Yeah. Um, level design in that. Anything else you guys played? You want to talk about before Pokemon Sword and no, Shield? That's pretty much it for me. I also played Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite for an hour. That's better than that's I remember cool. it being. Mm. It, okay. It looks <laughs> that that know. story is garbage well, it wasn't i wasn't fucking around with story so much oh, i was playing yeah. the. I, I i had the i had to hard uninstall that game during story <laughs> i thought i did and then the other night i was like itching for a fighting game that's called dark stalkers but it doesn't exist anymore so i was like well morgan's in this and i fired it up and i was like ah, and it was it was not it felt good to play just fucking around yeah but, yeah but i'll give it that. yeah uh anyway pokemon sword and pokemon shield came out um, and I started I'm maybe three hours in. I've got my starter. I've actually got a full party and some Pokemon in the box. You got sword? I got sword. Okay. Um, I got sword because I looked up the Pokemon who are in it and who are not. And I saw that Gothita and the whole Gothitelle family are in this, are in sword. Do you just like the name or the design or both? Mm, mostly the idea behind them because I don't really like the design. It looks like a weird Rosie Jetson that went goth. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Um, wait, wait. Isn't the Rosie... robot. Yeah. Oh, okay. Looks like the robot. Like, it's got the weird frills and all. I, I'm not yeah, a... Yeah. But, you know, it's got goth in the title. I feel like it's important <laughs> to me to, you know... Harness, honestly, I didn't, you know... The uh, sword would have been... Or uh, shield would have been cool because they have the ghost gym leader who's full goth. But, I don't know. Yeah. Anywho. Um, no, but honestly, sword... Or, yeah, sword is blue. And right. I, I was Pokemon blue. So, I was like, eh, I don't go that way. Uh, but, yeah. So, I'm a few hours in... 
Um, this is, uh, I mean, we believe this is our best Pokemon ever. You know, like it, but really, it, it it does a lot of the right things. Uh, it from the start recognizes that Pokemon is a franchise that's existed for twenty years and doesn't try and pretend like the character doesn't know what a Pokemon is. Doesn't have that stupid thing at the beginning of every Pokemon game that's like, welcome to the world of Pokemon. A Pokemon is a monster you can put in your pocket. And show, like, no. It's and like, there is a Pokeball. Like, yeah, it's none of... You like, know what's funny? Sorry. Uh, nobody puts Pokemon in their pockets. They put them on their belt. I know. Stupid asses. Put them in your pocket. It's not just a thing that... Well, wouldn't I accidentally hit the button? Like, put you put it in pocket? your pocket? Yeah. yeah, maybe. Yeah, but if it's in your pocket... <laughs> Rips you, your pants every you time. Might not, it might not have enough room to open up in your pockets. You oh, might hit the button. I want to have a Weedle popping out, you know, point, point his little thing on my dick, you know? Uh, yeah, that could, Weedle that for a bad. Weedle, you know what I mean? That's a, that's a different pocket monster. That's... But, uh, so, right from the start, though, you... Let's talk about Diglett's skin. Like, your... <laughs> <laughs> your rival, like, will kind of ask you or anyone who's like giving their tutorials to you before really going into tutorial mode is like, Hey, do you know what a Pokemon center is? And it says, of course not. Or of course I do. Or no, I've never been to one before. And as soon as you say, yeah, I know what this is. They're like, all right, cool. We'll meet me at the train station. Literally. All right, cool. Meet me at the train station. They walk out. Like <laughs> it's like the game's not going to waste your time. If this is not your first Pokemon, which is such a like breath of fresh air. And then along the same lines, like, all the stuff has been so streamlined. Like I, this game, it's like they sat down and really thought about what sucks about playing a Pokemon game. Like, what are the things that, <laughs> what are the things that they've been holding on to just because? Um, so so far, I mean, I'm way too early, even gameplay wise, that you would have been like, "Hey, uh, you need an HM to cut through this." But I don't believe any of that stuff's in here because it wasn't in Sun and Moon. I mean, yeah, they were slowly and taking they, those out. Yeah, so that all that stuff's gone, which they'd been doing that, but even the little stuff like previous games like having to go to a box to go get your pokemon out like nope you got a fucking mobile box like there are some areas they say where it won't work but i don't know what there's probably some story reason why that wouldn't happen or whatever but generally speaking anywhere you are you hit the thing and you say give me this pokemon in my party the only thing i guess that's consistent is you're still going from gym to gym getting badges but it's a little bit different because you can't just wander into a gym right you now need endorsement so you have to like prove yourself by battling and stuff like that to get a letter of endorsement to take to the gym. So I got my first one and I'm on the way to my first gym. And it the story is like super focused on the fact that Pokemon are everyone loves Pokemon, everyone loves competing about Pokemon. Like it's very much taking in that like competition the whole Yeah, com- cuz Galar region's more focused on the competitive side. Right, and it shines through. Like, everyone is talking to you about building a perfect team and how the important balance of Pokemon in your party and, like, really emphasizing that. I think that plays into the gameplay side of it, too, because uh, you have XP share is just on automatically um, for all of your Pokemon. You get XP when you catch Pokemon, too. Um, I do like that. It just makes it so easy to level up your party. Like, you don't have to pick and choose. You don't have to whatever. It's just... It's so good. Grinding's just a thing that's just being... Like we right, out. and yeah, and that's the worst. Like when like I'm trying to level up my Rattata, and it sucks against everything. So I'll leave with it, and I have to switch to Pokemon. Right, and, it's like they and, took and all the like, tedium out of yeah, it. It's so great. nice. The and that's the cool thing too, right? Like you're thinking about you just mentioned Rattata, right? Like you gotta have a fucking Rattata at the beginning because that's all you can fucking find, and that's all whatever. Um, the starting Pokemon I found, not starter, but the ones yeah. you find in the immediate in first, area, like, there, yeah, they're cool. Like I'm not mad. You know, normally when a new generation comes out, you're like. Okay, well, where's the ones I know? I don't really care. I'm like, because they look cool. Like, some of the previous generations where I've done that, I've been like, eh, I don't know. But I got a cool-looking fox thing. I've got a bird that looks cool. I don't remember any of their names. The fox is called, like, Nicky Boy or something like that. Probably not Nicky Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it is at all. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. <laughs> There's a bird that's uh, cool. Birdie Boy. Birdie Boy. <laughs> Is he like a little like ball like little ball blue little blue guy? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. You want that one for sure? Oh, really? Yeah. Is he the one that evolves into Corviknight? Maybe. Nah, yeah, boy. <laughs> Fucking another language. Uh, no, but they're 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 really. I I genuinely like the 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 Pokemon you're finding you, early on. Do you nickname your Pokemon? So, no. <laughs> um, Interesting. I. And I had I never did, so I then I never did because I never did. You know I was what I asking mean? because since you nicknamed your light in your house, I didn't know if you had like similar names for. That's the thing. So I was like, 
the last night I thought about it. The Are you kidding me? The dogs have like eight names. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. Well, I thought about naming. I was like, hey, maybe this is the game where I start nicknaming my Pokemon. And then I was like, oh, shit, I have to talk about them on the podcast. I'm not going to remember any of their names if I nickname them. And here we fucking are. So I should Birdie just boy nickname. Yeah. What was that, Fox? Nicky Boy. <laughs> <laughs> His name's Nick something. I don't know what it is. Nick the Fox is maybe what Sure, it's not like George Clooney? I don't know. It might be. <laughs> but I love that movie, by the way. I'm just going to throw it out there. I proceed. It's really good. What point? Fantastic Mr. Fox. George Clooney. The uh, Fox. Oh, yeah. God. All right. I, I got read. Thanks. I just like George <laughs> Clooney. I don't know. Clooney. But I, I, I'm like, I'm happy with my party. You know what I mean? Which is not something. That, like, usually early on, there's like always that one you have. I'm like, no, I'm happy with all the ones I got. And as you're walking through the world, you see the Pokemon, so you know what you're catching. Mm -hmm. And what's cool is, right, think about any game that has, like, random battles, or even Pokemon Let's Go, where you would, like, let's say you you see Abra standing in the corner, Chansey wandering around and whatever, and you accidentally bump into Chansey, and you're like, fuck no, I wanted the Abra. But by the time the battle's over, it's already respawned a whole different, no, 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 Mm -hmm. the same Pokemon are right where where you left them when you come out of battle in this one. So if you see a Pokemon... And you accidentally bump into another one, and it starts the battle. And you're like, shit, I wanted the other one. You come out, it's the exact same loadout as it was before. The only time that changes is if you actually physically leave an area and come back. What if that was respawn. a RAM? Like, it could have been. Like, yeah. It couldn't hold on, and they just designed this one from the ground up with that in mind? Yeah. I, but like, I'm just curious. I wonder if that was a design choice, flaw. You or, know, yeah, yeah. limitation. But, yeah, I mean, limitation I, has to work this is just cool because it's like – you know, you kind of see what's there and you know what's in front of you and you can approach how you want. Um, but it also means you can be selective about what you're doing. Like there was a part where like I could tell just it was really like tutorializing like, hey, you got to go do the thing where you talk to the guy and you show him that you can fight so that they can give you Pokeball so you can go. It was like all those things or whatever. And I just kind of wanted to streamline as quickly as I could and get through that part so I could get into the open world stuff. And... I was just like tiptoeing through the grass and avoiding all combat, which was great. And then when I wanted it, I could go and really dive in and, and, and play it how I wanted to play it. Once you get through the opening bit, you get to this big field. Uh, that's the one they showed off at E3, if you remember, the big oh, like, trial yeah. stuff. And it's fucking great. Like As soon as you step out, I was just like, all throughout the game, the, the beginning part when you're in the town... I kept like habitually just hitting the right stick to turn the camera and nothing was happening. I was like, ah, oh, that's a bummer. As soon as you get to that field, full 360 view, you can spin around. It looks beautiful. And it's just like... It's run well? It, dude, it runs really smooth. Uh, the the Pokemon moving around, look like they look like they belong in the world. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, the game has a look to it that I really like. I, the thing about playing those on 3DS the last few iterations, it's like they always looked like... Like, they made really, really cool-looking games and high, well-polished games, and then they had to put them on the 3DS. So, so it's it was just, just all, like, like, compressed. Yeah, there. and this, like, they can really breathe a little bit. It's it's not all the way where I'd want it to be, but it is definitely an improvement. It looks it, – oh, I think it I looks mean, really sharp. I hope sharp. so, definitely, yeah. Um, you can customize your character. Uh, you can – which you know is a, is a big, important part of a video game these yep. days, Matt. Um, but every town has its own I little – I say it is when every character, like Norman Reedus. Well, you could do that in this game. Does your character talk? Uh, uh oh. I feel like my no, probably not. I mean, they never really have. That's why. I was, yeah, I didn't know if that was a thing that changed. Like maybe there's like a little bubble for a second. Or I feel like at one point I was like, oh, that was different. You know what I mean? Like there was something that was different about that, but I don't think it necessarily that your character talk talked. Um, or like expressive reactions. There's a little a little baby bit of those things, um, but not nothing that stood out to me. Okay. You know what I mean? Like it, it all seemed just kind of par, par for the course. All right. Um, but uh, it, it again like streamlining stuff. I, what I like when you're you wander into a wild Pokemon battle, you're fighting them. It's it's exactly what it's always been, right? Like fight, bag, I don't Pokemon and run away. Now there's another option above that. You hit the X button, throw a Pokeball. You don't have to go to your bag to get the Pokeballs. You know what I mean? They've mm-hmm. done stuff in the past where it's been like a touchscreen shortcut where like it's your last used item is mapped there. But like, nope, this is dedicated Pokeball button. Hit X in any battle, you'll throw a Pokeball. I don't know how that changes once you get Great Balls and that kind of stuff. But Yeah, because I wonder if you can auto-assign it like to be a certain... You, you might. I, I don't know for sure. But either way, like having that option right there was like, oh my God, it's so good. Hmm. Um, but it's traditional po- like catching... Um, yeah. mechanics right where you have to weaken the pokemon and then 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But because like let's go just like, had you. Do oh it. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it, it's, it's back to your tradition. It's back to traditional. But you're also getting the XP for catching, which is just such a. So and good. that goes across to your Pokemon as well, right? Yep. Yep. At first, I thought even the Pokemon you just caught got XP, but I just I was looking at it wrong. It doesn't. Which that so would have been that would be even weird, the Pokemon right? you're catching gets the XP. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. I, it, it, I was gonna say, what the fuck? It there looked, is handed out XP. You it, get XP and you get XP. It looked like that for a second. I was like, did they just give it to the one I just caught by? Ge-? It's weird. But it's it, like, it yeah, like, I it just didn't. beat your ass and you're getting. I, I mean, guess you are. I guess you would get experience. It's because it's I didn't, experience. Yeah, your ass beat. Now you know. Now, <laughs> now you got captured. So. I didn't realize I, I had the number of Pokemon I had in my party. So it, I was looking at the wrong. Either way, you got the experience of being captured. Yeah, true. Plus two. But that stuff's it's that I like so far. I, I generally like I like the world. I really didn't think I'd like the setting, you know what I mean? But I'm okay with it. Um I don't they're using some British slang, which I'm kinda like, eh, all right. Seems a little Did you run into forced. Team Yell? No, I haven't yet. Okay. I'm intrigued. I mean, are we really playing Pokemon games for the setting? Though. Well, that's the thing. I didn't want to play Sun and Moon because I could give a fuck about Hawaii. Like I didn't that really? whole aesthetic. Right. That, that like well, all right. I mean that whole like aesthetic to me like just doesn't do anything for me. I mean, I, mean, I feel like I'm coming to Pokemon I, I, when I you know if I do because the kind of Pokemon look cool or I kind of yeah. like the the theme they were going for. Well, that's the thing too. Like, like I the, give a fuck about the setting. Like it's just but there. the setting influenced the Pokemon. Like the one in, in Sun and Moon. Like you had like a couple of like Tiki Pokemon, like stuff like that. Yeah. That I was like, mm, you know what I mean. And this one, like a couple, like I really don't like the surfetched, like the far fetched that like is a knighted. What mm, stupid. Um, but like, you know, it's not your mom, it's your mom. You know what I mean? It's that kind of shit that I'm like, ah, oh, it's fine. Yeah. But it's like so regional to me, ah, which I'm watching the Gordon Ramsay material. That's yeah, fine. I know. I know. Oh yeah. I kind of, I guess I can't play it for a setting. That's why I didn't play diamond and pearl. I, I, I didn't like the, the, the whole like, wow. All right. Like a European, maybe yeah, I'm in the mind uh, uh, aesthetic to it all. Yeah, they're just they're like, definitely... like like black and white looked more appealing because it had more of that like, like city urban. Because well, black and white was based in New York, and you can catch a big pile of garbage, which is of course what we all want. You know? Yeah, even in this game, you can. I dude, I can't wait to get a Garbodor, and then and you can Dynamax, Dynamax them. I know. <laughs> I'm walking to my first Dynamax thing. Like the Dynamax tutorial is about to happen, but I didn't do it as of this recording. Um, what was what what's the stupid ghost Pokemon I've, I saw in, in the Pol- trailer? Pol Geist. Oh, is that the that's the teapot teapot thing, right? with a ghost inside? But if you drink its tea, you can something spooky happens. Apparently, I haven't done it. Is yet. it Monster Energy inside? <laughs> <laughs> Only if you purify it first. <laughs> then you'll kill it because it's a ghost. But <laughs> the the other cool thing, uh, BT after all. The other big thing that's that's different uh, in terms of streamlining, again, like that, if you take nothing away from this conversation, it's just that they have made Pokemon so much, like they've taken out all the shit where you're kind of like, why am I doing this? You don't have to ask that question anymore. Um, unless the question you're asking is, why am I playing Pokemon? You kind of might be asking yourself that. But if it's just like all that stuff where it's like, you know, they've just done it because they've just done it because they've just done it. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's gone. So um, you press Y anywhere not in battle but anywhere on the field and it opens up the y comms is that what it was i wrote it down y com um and the y com lets you trade right away so if you guys were playing i hit y and i'm just say hey you're on my friends list i want to send you let's trade um they have surprise trade which formerly was wonder trade where it's like Hey, I got a Bidoof. What am I going to get if I put a Bidoof up? Oh, someone sent me a Bidoof. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, but that was Wonder Trade was always great because what I would do once I was I would get into like the later game stuff, I would breed my starters and then to get the other starters, I would just put one up and just hope that I was kind of like, you know, kinda, making somebody's day like, hey, here's a free whatever. Yeah. Chimchar. I liked in Gold and Silver with the Game Boy Colors. The, the, the gift exchange you could do once a day with your friends, the little UV thing, just yeah. put it to each other. Like, yeah. here's night. That was cool. But now you can do that just by hitting Y. Like all yeah. that. I don't know if the gift trade. I haven't checked that, but I'm pretty. There's that stuff. There's like a weird like social media feed that comes through that just shows you. And they had that in the past ones where it would I show think you. X and Y like, did that. It was X and Y did it. Alpha Sapphire did it. With the um, you'd be like standing in a field, and other players who are currently standing in that location. So long as you're connected to the internet, it shows you what they're doing right mm-hmm. now. Like. This person just caught this Pokemon. This person just found this item. Those types of things. Um, there's a lot of that, that you know, built right in. The, the convenience of that, like, just hit Y and you're in this whole internet connectivity menu. 
and you can immediately do whatever you want to do. Just again, streamlines all that crap. Because before it was like you got to get the stylus and you have to tap the orange tab. Once you're in the orange tab, then you have to. It was just so convoluted. This is, is there just like, like boom. any type of like networking benefit if you're doing like ad hoc stuff? Like, is there anything like, like if you connect with a certain amount of people, do you like does that do anything? Mm. Like, so like, like I'm, I'm thinking like um, Pokemon Go. Not say the Pokemon Go, uh, for 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 the DS when you street pass people, yeah, with, yeah, with like yeah. with with like with your Mies or something, right? Is there anything like that? Not that I've seen, but I wouldn't be surprised. There's probably something like because I would say like Magfest is gonna blow up with that. Because well, they've done <laughs> really, the they've done good with that stuff in the past, so yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's something there. It definitely like get so many friends <clears throat> and then bleh. yeah, as soon as you open up that menu, it lets you know like it's telling you like stuff that's happening nearby physically nearby but obviously mm. there's no one in the room playing with me right um but i i don't know for sure yet so i can't say one way or the other but i would be surprised if there wasn't yeah and then this is still like your world right like you're so you talk about the open that you go to that field like you don't see like another trainer running around with no you, right? yeah is it's, all it's still you yeah it's probably not, not until like you would invite somebody right for like to do those raids those raid battles. Yeah, so I haven't done that yet, but I know that's the thing is they have the big Dynamax raid battles um, where you take down a big Pikachu. It, yeah, you all do that, and if you're if you have friends who are doing it, you can do it with your real friends. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I know. Um, I it, you know I think that's generally it. I mean, it's at the end it's Pokemon, so you're gonna catch Pokemon and whatever. But I just generally like this is like, like the most refreshing one in a long time. Um, and it was cool that I'm fucking sitting on my couch playing with my pro controller on a TV, you know, and then I didn't last True. night, but my plan for last night was play a little bit and then go up and watch TV and just pick up the switch and just keep going. Uh, but Katie fell asleep. So I ended up just playing. Did you notice a little detail in your room in the game? I didn't, uh, I didn't pry, I didn't try it out, but I saw what it is. Yeah. That the... Yeah. Like whatever joy cons you have on your switch for real, it will mimic it in the game. Yeah. I had none connected to mine, so it just defaulted yeah. to gray. I thought they, so they're just not there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I heard, I saw people doing that, so I was going to sit there and just pop a bunch off and see what it did. But, yeah. It's important, Matt, you know? <laughs> I mean, I get I, – I like the small little detail, but I want to keep playing around with it. It's like it's not that important to me. Uh-huh. Um, anywho, Pokemon. Is that it for now playing? I think that's it for now playing. So uh, now we have to ask the important question of, of, of all these games. So I yes. started asking the important question earlier in the year after a game failed to have this feature. But all these games do have a pause button, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. Even Death correct. Stranding does have a pause button as well. That is correct. Now we have a new question to ask. Now that we know what the strand genre is, uh. what games are in the strand genre? Mm. Is, does Pokemon make the cut? Here's the thing. I've played the strand genre now. It's not a genre. Yeah. Other people would argue that it is. I mean, I'm not saying I am. I'm saying Higajima would. <laughs> the idea of some level of permanence being in your game because of other players, it's been done before. I'm going to say Bloodborne. Right. Like, that kind of stuff has already... But if anything, Death Stranding is a... <laughs> is but part, I, also, I get it because, born. like, you're wandering and then... Matt's ladder is in your world that he left there, and somebody's thumbs up sign is right there. Did you ever find any of my yeah. stuff? Oh, oh nice. your stuff? No, oh, okay. no, no, no. But I've seen other people. I was going to ask if that would even work with a shared game, but it's supposed to, huh? Yeah. Once you so the way that works, not not to get back into Death Stranding, but real quick, like if you go, you can't see anything in the world because it's not connected to the Chiral network. Right. Once you get a facility into the Chiral network, like the region around it unlocked and that's when you see everyone else's stuff right i just didn't know because because i mean i mean, he's I playing played... your your game well, right it's still no, no no it's it's still separate oh, it's still okay. separate yeah. like we all have our norman reedises but yeah our sam porter bridges because it's just a login okay i just want to because the whole like, system no, share thing because yeah, there, like there's some whatever. npc stuff like very early on you see but then yeah it does unlock like like the you did you make that no you wouldn't have made that bridge yet so, like, you have the ability to make bridges if, like, you put something down and then bring the materials to it. Like, oh, yeah, like no, legitimate no, no. bridges. Yeah. Like, I've seen, like, other people's bridges. I'm like, oh, thanks for the bridge. Yeah. No. You know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Other people's ladders or ropes. Like, uh, the one Mule Network had, like, a rope right where I wanted to drop. I was like, all right, Mel Gear Solid. Let's go. Go down the rope. Going to take the thing. And I'm going to run for my life. Yeah, no. All right. None of that. All right, so. 
We're, we're, we're going to keep expand, um, exploring the strand genre here uh, at the Free Cheese. In the meantime, Xbox had its annual, or now annual, uh, XO event. XO19 happened in London, and there was a big old um, in- episode of Inside Xbox, basically, to make a bunch of announcements. And I'll kind of give you the headlines, and then we'll move from there. Obsidian announced a new game, Grounded, launching in spring 2020. Um, it's kind of like uh, Fortnite meets an RPG, and it looks uh, the anime, the art style is, I don't know. Uh, Wait, like, which, which one is this? This is the like a bug's life where you're like, got it, honey. I shrunk the kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. You have a character and you're running around and everything's super huge. Survival. Crafting, yes, fighting bugs cooperatively, yes, yeah. It's, I mean, all right. If, yeah. it, comes, if it comes to Game Pass, I'll yeah. take a peek. Well, it will. It, yeah, all of this stuff is Game Pass. Well, then I'll, I'll basically everything they I'll announced at this show is coming to Game Pass, which is kind of wild. Yeah. Um, Rare announced its next new IP, Everwild. Uh, I believe this is when the stream cut out, so I don't. Like, for, yeah, I mean, I went back and saw the full trailer afterwards. Does it? What, could you describe it a little bit? I, I didn't... All it is is just three people navigating throughout this world, seeing all different kinds of creatures within it. Some, you know, more predator than prey or whatever. Mm-hmm. And like, I, I don't know what it is exactly. So it's trying, but third person. Really? I don't know. That's what I'm. All right. I don't... mean, because like, given the characters didn't do anything besides just stand there and kind of look around and one was like getting close to the animal so i don't know if that like plays a part mm. in don't this. feel bad mark because uh, i'm on xbox.com here on the everwild game page and the game details are quote introducing everwild a brand new ip from rare unique and unforgettable experiences await in a natural and magical world end quote so you know, natural magical bad. so yeah so I, i'm feeling <laughs> like there feel are probably no i mean there probably are like trying like elements in this because i feel like this is more like oh you might have a ranger you might somebody who's more adept with the natural surroundings maybe with like you know being able to like speak to animals or something you might have somebody who's more whatever you know um if they're taking any kind of dna from sea of thieves i can see this more being like not really like um just do whatever you want but exploring more on land and kind of breath of the wild ish of like you know whatever is happening there naturally just interacting with it kind of thing speaking of sea of thieves latest update for sea of thieves uh was detailed which will be out on november 20th the seabound soul uh is a new lore focused tall tale quest for players looking to play their part in a thrilling story um jude did you watch this on mixer yeah i did so we, right. we got that got steering the, wheel the gears of war one is that the one no it's like it's like obsidian oh oh that's so oh. it matches all the other promo stuff that was black with green gems on it Oh, okay. Um, I don't care. Now I just watch on Mixer. <laughs> uh, we got a little bit more into uh, some stuff with Project X Cloud. It'll be coming to Windows 10 PCs and new territories um, in 2020, but nothing about iOS yet, which is all I really care about. I say uh, tough. It's tough to like, put on the PC when I. You can All I have to do is like pl- pivot in my yeah. room and I'm at my console, so yeah. Um, but that is neat, you know what I mean? If oh, you, yeah, definitely. I mean, I mean someone on a laptop, right? On the go in a hotel or whatever, yeah. Um, you'll also be able to use uh DualShock 4 and game pads from Razer and as it, controllers for the app. That, that that was cool that she actually said that, yeah. At the thing, she it's actually just, said no Sony DualShock Four, and some people were like, Ugh. "Like, no, nah, but we're in a whole new era." Like, you know what I mean? I was like, I was like "Fuck you guys!" Like, it's just that, we're trying to break those walls. That's yeah. the yeah. bridges, why man. Get, bridges. Why yeah. get all <laughs> the real world strand? Yeah. Uh, uh, no, like, why? Why even complain? It's, about a DualShock when, like, you can still use that. It's not like it's exclusive to the DualShock people now. People have that whole... whatever controller, man. Some people just have the console war mentality still. And it's just like... It's, it's going away. I mean, I do. I mean, so PS4 all the way. You know, we got we got Death Stranding now. We won. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> we sure did. <sighs> um, but there's now 50 titles on xCloud. Uh, they added Devil May Cry 5. They added Tekken 7, Madden NFL 20. Fighting games is interesting. And a lot more. 
Yeah, I'm curious to see how Because, like, that stuff so. gets very, like, yeah. like, it has to be good. How many games are in Stadia? Uh, 12 at launch. Yeah. With 14 additional ones coming by the end of the year. So it was, it was big that they got out and made sure there were 50. Um, and one-fourth of it is Tomb Raider. That is correct. <laughs> which are all available on Game Pass, which it was yeah. also announced that Game Pass is going to be added to xCloud next year. So anything on Game Pass will be on xCloud. And obviously the games you've purchased are now confirmed. Because that was the big question. It was like, it seemed like that's where they were going. But now they've confirmed basically xCloud is just going to be a service that lets you play your Xbox games and Game Pass titles anywhere you are. So I'm like that would be that's a that's a weird thing to do there, right? So like think of it if you don't have a PC but you have an Xbox, if you subscribe to XCloud, could you hypothetically get the high end vi- like visuals of a PC because you're playing off the server? Theoretically. Yeah, so that yeah. That they has maybe a potential another reason to. They it. haven't pushed that part of it, but yeah. Um the Xbox Game Pass, they're still doing their like dollar thing now. Uh, they're starting to do it again after that one at E3. The other thing that is a part of this is that if you haven't taken part of any of these things previously, or I don't know if some of these weren't really in there, um, you can now get one month of EA Access, three months of Discord Nitro, and six months of Spotify Premium if you're an Ultimate member. I kind of just brushed it aside because I've been an Ultimate member since E3. Um, but no, it still works for me. I like almost accidentally signed up for EA access last night, just fucking around in the store. So you can take advantage of that. Now I might try that discord nitro. I don't know. know. What is discord nitro? I know they were talking about it. It lets us make games. Uh, no, they actually removed that. Oh, um, because nobody was using them or playing them. Discord nitro lets you, because discord's fucking weird to navigate. Yeah. I don't, I I still don't understand it. Discord nitro lets you create custom emojis in your own channels. And then also lets you use any emojis from any channels across channel. So I could come okay. into ours with like some of the cool Sonic the Hedgehog ones I might have from another one um, or okay. whatever. So, all right. So they're catching up to Twitch. Um, yeah. There's other little <laughs> things about Discord Nitro that I can't remember, but that's that was one of the big ones. Okay. I okay. think you can uh, remove the numbers from the end of your name or something like that. Or you can choose what numbers you have. Mm, got it. Something like that. Bleeding Edge, the new game from, uh, what's that, developing, they don't have the name of the fucking company in this press release. Bleeding Edge. They're the ones that did uh, Hellblade. Ninja Theory. Jesus. This is, oh, uh, yeah. I keep forgetting they this that game. game at E3, they showed that game right? at E3, yeah. but now we've got a release date of March 24th. Mm, that arena. Yeah. Overwatch Combat game. game. Guy. Um, yeah. Did Don't Nod get purchased by... No. So I found this out. Okay. I was like, what the fuck was that? That was just like a, uh, I guess a deal of some kind. Okay. Got it. The way they framed that was like, did you guys just buy the studio? Anyway, Don't Nod Entertainment, uh, people who made Life is Strange are making Tell Me Why, a new narrative adventure. Uh, Halo Reach coming to the Halo Master Chief Collection on December 3rd. And that is, of course, when the Master Chief Collection will start to appear on PC for the first time, starting with Reach. Yeah, boy. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, boy. Uh, Flight Simulator got a new trailer, but no release date, sadly. So we're going to keep holding out for that. Uh, my most anticipated game of 2020 currently. The... What do we got? Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition is out now. They showed a trailer for that. Minecraft Dungeons. Minecraft Earth. I didn't see much on Earth. No, or maybe just wasn't paying attention. There. But... Um, and then... Oh, they kind of move this shit around a little bit weirdly, but uh, Wasteland 3 was another new trailer for that, and that got a release date of May 19th. I think that was the last thing they showed, wasn't it? That was the very last thing they showed, but they also yeah. talked about Crossfire X gameplay. Yeah. Cart Rider Drift, which seemed, like, wildly cool, which I didn't expect. Yeah. It seems like Mod Nation, but not, but I don't I, know. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I want to play that. Um... And then the biggest news that I think here us at the Free Cheese are excited about uh, Final Fantasy series joining Xbox Game Pass uh, and Kingdom Hearts Classics are coming to Xbox One. So Final Fantasy 7, 8 Remastered, 9, 10, 10, 2 HD Remaster, 12 The Zodiac Age. Uh, what is this? Final, Matt Sellner's recommendation oh. Final Fantasy 13, Final Fantasy 13 2, Lightning Returns, Matt Sellner Returns. 
Uh, and Final Fantasy 15 will be joining Game Pass on console and PC starting in 2020. Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 plus 2.5 Remix, Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue will come to Xbox One in 2020 for the first time. And Kingdom Hearts 3 demo is available as of right now. Also, the Yakuza story, Yakuza series is coming to Game Pass. Um, that one right there. Yakuza 0, Yakuza Kiwami 1, and Yakuza Kiwami 2 are coming to Xbox for the first time and to Game Pass. Like, aside from this, like maybe one or two exclusives, Yakuza was like my biggest hold for why I still have a PS4. Um, so that's just slowly and depleting. Now, yeah, they're, they're making some moves. In yeah, Death Stranding, though. It's all right. They'll come to Xbox. There were a couple more things, um, but yeah, that was that was the big, uh, the big, big. Uh, let's do a couple more headlines here, and we'll kick over to that email and get out of here. Um, this is small, but the uh, well, actually, the big news is the Sega, the Sonic trailer happened this week. Um, I yeah. forgot that that happened. <laughs> Uh, but that looks better. I, I forgot what that first one really looked like. Cause in hindsight, you're like, it was fine. Right. And you look at it side by side. You're like, no, it fucking wasn't. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, that was bad. However, if you do want to make a change, I just go into change.org and <laughs> yes. look in, uh, for something that I put out. <laughs> you have it on your Twitter somewhere, don't you? No, I can put it there. Yeah. I just, just pin it. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, make it your pin tweet. There you go. Oh, I could do that. Yeah, yeah all right. For, all check, right. So when this goes, yeah, check, check Matt's uh, pin tweet <laughs> at Maddie Ice one three one on Twitter. Uh, but in that, there's a quick little like like logo treatment that happens that shows like Sega properties. Uh, and yeah, that uh, wasn't there before. Right, and uh, Shenmue's in there. So hey, oh, um, there's some other stuff too. But there, there's a lot of Sega properties. So maybe there's some hope for. Uh, the future of, of uh, Sega. They showed Space Harrier, Golden Axe, Shining Resonance, Space Channel 5, Knights. Uh... I, don't know. I mean, that's a, that's the same logo they used for like any of the other games they're announcing sometimes, like that Classics Collection or whatever. Yeah, it just it's nice that they're, you know, kind of... Yeah, they really embraced more of their legacy. H- yeah, in this one, which was, that's, yeah. a, that's a good thing. Um, Yacht Club Games announced that December 10th is the release date for the final content in Shovel Knight. Everything will be out December 10th. Everything will be out December 10th. Man. Except for like a physical release that got delayed in Europe or something. But everything will be out December 10th. <laughs> um, including the Amiibos. Including the Amiibo, which... Yeah, yeah, get on that, guys. <laughs> uh, I think it's generally it. Uh, for news we'll talk about we're gonna jump right into an email uh from everybody's favorite cousin listener marie claire wrote in mary claire mary claire damn it (laughs) i'll remember eventually uh subject what up matt style uh body reads hello again so you said to ask anything Yes. Matt the is campaign just nodding is and grinning. <laughs> uh, what was the craziest thing you did as a child? Why did you do it? And would you do it again? Craziest. So, at, at what point... That's like the lamest kid. At, like, at, at what point are we not considered a child anymore? Like, what age? 13. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> it was just an arbitrary... I... <laughs> I saw this email when it came in, and I've been loosely thinking about it, and I don't... The craziest, I don't know. Like, I can think of embarrassing stories. I can think of whatever. Uh, I guess overall, it's like, this is crazy that it even happened, but I think it's more of like, I was an asshole kind of story, hmm. I guess. Hmm. Um. I was I forgot what grade what grade was I in it had to be middle school because I was waiting because I started riding a bus then so we were at my bus stop get it ready to get picked up I think this was probably sixth grade maybe I don't know it was around a time like right before Pokemon Stadium 2 was coming out and uh there we were waiting there and my friend 
finds this hundred dollar bill on the curb, like on like on the road, like yeah. whatever. And um, yeah, just it's curbside, and he he gets so excited about it, and like for some reason, excuse me, um, my my friend and I just kind of convinced him that it was fake, mm. and I. So he gave it to me. Like, mm. I convinced him to, to give it to me. And then, like, people in school found out about it somehow, and they were trying to claim that it, that, that it was theirs. It was, well, it was, Mark. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was like, all right, yeah. Uh, you, I think it was mine, actually. Yeah, yeah. I like, yeah, like, oh, yeah, you just happened to live in my neighborhood, and you just happened yeah. to drop that there? Well, my dad was over there, and he told me to come by and bring my $100 bill, and I just I left it on the curb. Yeah, and so uh, I used that money to buy a Pokemon Stadium, too. Yeah, but it went to good use. You still have that cart? Uh, no. Got to a fight with my brother, and he took a hammer to it and fuck smashed it because. All I, right. Damn. I, I think I think because I because I because I broke something of his. So murdered Pokemon. Who was on the cover of Pokemon Stadium Two? Lugia and Ho. Not anymore. Yeah. Because <laughs> that 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 cartridge was actually I think it was half gold, half clear, or half silver or something. Karma, yeah. you know. Yeah. Bottom, yeah. yeah. Um. It's just this whole mess. And I guess in the end, I kind of deserved it because not only for breaking my brother's stuff or whatever, but for also treating a friend like shit. Yeah. So convincing them that it, that, that, it, that it was fake when it was in fact not. Mm. I I just, I don't know. That, to me, that's, that, whole, that whole moment should have never happened. So I think that's just bad shit insane in itself. Yeah. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why that stands out to me. I don't. I, I guess I feel bad for it, but. There yeah. are... No, don't feel bad for <laughs> it. You outwit it, someone. That's what happened. I had a lot of those things. Like, there's a, a there's a moment for me where I feel like uh, I crossed over into a different level of crazy shit. You know what I mean? The fireworks one. The fireworks, fireworks story. One. Didn't you light your neighbor's deck on fire? My brother did. I was oh, just kind of there. Apprentice. Or, yeah. Yeah, kind no, of we were it. lighting fireworks and throwing them off the roof, and he threw one of those little. Like N80s. fountain things. No, the oh, ones that just kind yeah, of yeah, emit gotcha, like a okay, glow yeah. of light. He threw one, and that was like it you just saw the bed on air. Before, yeah, it just yeah. kind of happened, and then the neighbor's deck caught fire, and we didn't know it. And we were gone. But like, there's like the high school years where like you're drinking, and that there's that whole other kind of level of shit where you know whatever. But like the, cr- I lit my hand on fire when I was thirteen. I've done that uh, when I was older. <laughs> I well, we were at um, we were at like a, a party or something in seventh or eighth grade, and someone did a thing where they took cologne and sprayed the palm of their hand, lit it on like you put cologne on each other's hands, so light it, with hairspray and you'd high five and you'd pass the flame around. Oh, and yeah, it was disqualified. It was a dumb little party trick, and honestly, like it's not that big of a deal. Like a little spritz of cologne, you light it. It doesn't. You don't really feel the warmth at all, or whatever. Yeah. Why well, I was so like, ah, that's cool, right? Um, my dad had stopped by, and I was like, hey, dad, check out this cool trick I learned. Grabbed a bottle of Lysol and doused my whole hand in it. I don't know if you know this. Lysol is a little bit more flammable than cologne. Yeah. So I lit it, and it, I'm sitting in the front yard, with fucking my hands on fire. And it won't go out. Like I'm shaking it, and it won't go out because I. And also, I didn't just do a spray. I like covered my whole hand in Lysol. Won't go out. Won't go out. Won't go out. So I run inside, hands on, literally hands on fire, and then turn on the sink and ru- run the water over it. After the water goes out, it, my hand feels like I'm like extending my fingers, but it's I'm holding it completely still, which is like pulsating uh. feeling. Um, and then it ended up just bubbling up. I had to go get like a special cream and fucking put this cream on it for like a month. And I'm like popping the blisters for, Ugh, no, that was fun. Couldn't grow hand on it or hair on it for like a year. I think I still have like, some of my knuckle hairs are shorter than like my index fingers or whatever. Yeah. They're shorter than the rest of them. Cause I burnt them all for that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, I would not do that again. I might do the cologne thing again. That was kind of fun, but the, there was smaller stuff too. Like we used to go. We would go, there's the mall, and then there was the avenue. And we'd go hang out at both, but we'd leave them before our parents would pick us up. We'd wander over, there was a 7-Eleven they put by the mall. So we'd go there, it was still brand new, it was like nice. You go there now, and it's like, ugh, ugh. But back then, it was nice. You'd go there, and we would, coffee creamer was free, as you know. So we would fill our pockets with coffee creamer, and we'd walk back to the mall, and every car that we'd passed, 
squeeze the bottom of a coffee creamer, pop, spray it with milk. Because <laughs> it was funny to us to think that people would come out and their car would be just like, um, not covered in, but he just got like a little bit of milk down the I'll I'll give a little uh, extra credit um because this isn't mine but something that my brother did uh when he was younger he went to a Seven Eleven and would take a pin and poke holes in a box of condoms. Ooh, there was a kid in my neighborhood who found <laughs> condoms in his sister's drawer and did that to her, and we were like, dude, no, you're gonna be a fucking <laughs> uncle, and you, you don't want to do that. Yeah, like I never did anything like on that level. I think like closest thing to anything like that when we were moving out of um, my first house, we we left eggs inside the vents and toilet tanks. Yeah, we peed house. in all the closets. <laughs> peed? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We bathroom stood up. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Uh. And then probably that last day of moving, yeah, I went down the alley with the rest of the eggs and like chucked them at houses. Yeah, it wasn't even October. Yeah. <laughs> we would do that with paintball guns and stuff, you know. Mm. You got anything? No, I'm like the lamest kid knowing the man. <laughs> you had to do something. No, ah. really, I can't think of anything. I I guess you could say the time I didn't wear a cup to baseball practice and I got hit in the nuts, and I was out of commission for like three hours. What are the odds of that though? Is that the one time you yeah, didn't wear a cup? Yeah, the one time you don't wear a cup, and then the one it, time you... Yeah, it was literally the one time it didn't wear a cup. <laughs> and that's the only time you got hit in the nards with... Probably. Yeah. Damn. At least that memorable. I don't know, like... Not, don't say nards. It's pants covered up. <laughs> <laughs> it's nards. Uh, yeah, yeah like... I don't know. I mean, she's seen me punch a couple walls a couple times when I couldn't control my temper as a kid when I lost in video games. Oh, but, like, that's... That. Yeah, a lot of my crazy stuff would be, like, fights with my brothers. And, yeah. like, the one time I, I I was chasing my brother throughout the house, and I had, like, a Cal Ripken signed baseball or whatever. It was, it was like, a, like, replica mm-hmm. or whatever. But it, um, I was got into a fight, and he was chasing me, and he pulled the old Looney Tune trick of, like, opening a door as he's running, and I run into it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, like, I'm, like, beyond pissed off. I'm, like, cussing every, like, yeah. every word known to man. I have the ball ready to chuck at his face, like, point blank, and then my dad comes in and catches that knee act and my brother's so happy about that moment and he still will tell that story i mean and it wasn't me but my sister threw an orange at my throat oh shit she was all county catcher too <laughs> oh shit <laughs> beamed yeah what was the distance from that uh you've been in my living room so like <laughs> next to the tv to the couch oh, oh God. <laughs> also point blank <laughs> uh yeah yeah i I mean, I was we, lame, man. We did some dumb Not shit. Not lame. I was just, you know, it's where am I surrounding? We made a scarecrow, and then we stood on the side of the road and threw it into traffic. Because <laughs> <laughs> they thought it was a body, you know? Yeah, like, th- I think like, the most, like... <laughs> they kind of did, they just kind of, like, slowed down and then drove around. And I went, mean, this happened... What the fuck? I mean, not as a kid, but in college, uh, me and my roommate senior year... I don't know. For some reason, we wanted an orange traffic cone. Yeah. So uh, our dorm, I don't know if you've ever been in, like, Salisbury, like, in the heart of wherever the college is. But mm-hmm. um, there is a main highway that, like, kind of divides half the campus. And uh, it's 13. And it's, like, six lanes of traffic. And there's always cars going by. Uh, so we decided we wanted this orange traffic cone for the room. So we couldn't fit into the trunk. We didn't want to put it in the car, so we tried to hold onto it on the roof Smart. of the car. <laughs> yeah. And we made the turn onto onto thirteen, and then like it was literally supposed to be the next light and make a left, but we had to hit the gas cause of traffic, and the cone just fell off the car right into the middle of traffic. We think a car may have hit it, but it definitely did. And then we to. you know turned left and got turned back to our dorms, and we're like, all right. We was into that, but that like that was a college, and you do that stupid shit in yeah. college. No, uh, you just sparked a memory where we went, and you know the big white uh, wood things that you put up to stop traffic that have like orange, and you put them yeah. up at like a fucking county fair or some mm-hmm. shit. We took a bunch of those that they had somewhere, and we just put them in the main, like my where I grew up, it was like a main road that had like courts of houses off of it, right? Yeah. So on the main drive, it was like a four lane 
thing. <laughs> we blocked it all with these fucking things, I, and then just kind of stood and watched what happened. And then uh, I did something similar when it was snowing, but it was like our our neighborhood. But like the I was at the end of a street, but it branched off to like a more to like a to, to pretty much a T shaped road. Mm-hmm. And uh, but instead of those, it was a giant snow wall. Oh yeah. And so yeah. like a car would have to stop, get out of their car, and. Kick it. And like as he's kicking it down, he's just like cussing up a storm, yelling at us. He's like, "You fucking kids!" And then you throw <laughs> snowballs at him and run away with your fingers in the air. <laughs> Stone Cold style. Christmas, <laughs> we took, we went around one day and got. <laughs> oh God! We got all the Christmas trees we could find after Christmas. And we bundled them all up, and we took them to some. <laughs> we just not. We weren't like targeting anybody. We just found a house and put all the Christmas trees up against their front door, like leaned them there, so that when they opened the door, they'd fall in. And then we, look, I'm not gonna beat the wall, but we just we like beat the shit out of the wall. Sorry, Oswald. And then ran away. Dude, that's a real thing in uh, NFL like dorms or in training camp. They'll like. Fill up like, a trash can full of water and uh, lean it against the door and bang yep. on it, and then it would just yep. fucking flood the apartment. There's so, numerous training camp stories about that happening, like rookies. Yeah, we did it with Christmas trees. So, like, <laughs> so back when like Love for Dead first came out, it, it wasn't like fully patched or anything. So there's a lot of glitches you could do in versus mode, where like if you were if you were one of the zombies, more so the the smoker. There's I think it was at the end of No Mercy or the, the Mercy Hospital first map. Um, there's a there's a part where the survivors have to go in an elevator and go to the top of this unfinished building, like so it's just all it's, it's all like scaffoldings or whatever you call it. Uh, th- th- there's a forklift up there. You can you can scratch at the forklift and it would slowly move it, mm-hmm. so you could block the elevator. So once they once they get up there, <laughs> they it's day they can't get out. So <laughs> all the zombies can come in through the top and just fuck everyone up because eventually they'd run out of ammo. And so. Um, I wasn't exactly a part of this, but uh, sometimes late at night we'd be playing that, and then after we're done playing, we'd go to Denny's at like three in the morning on a weeknight. That was the best. <laughs> and the the Denny's was remodeling, so they threw out all their old booths, which, like seats and whatever. My friends took that and we put them in front of my friends' front and back doors. Well, I'm... Oh fuck yes! <laughs> so when they go outside, they can't get out, <laughs> and like my friends' parents like flipped out they were oh. they were pissed because they were like what there could have been a fire and we we couldn't have been able to get out we could have died well all right well there here, wasn't and you did so <laughs> shut the fuck up but here's the thing well, like i could understand that for the front door but the back door it wasn't at the back door it was at the back fence so they could have gotten out yeah come on but they they, they were just really paranoid about things so like that so my friend got all this heat for nothing. Oh, I don't have time for and that shit. Like, but I thought it was funny to just wake up and have that. <laughs> That's pretty good. Just to carry that joke out. Yeah, I mean, all my... it's It always relates back to me getting mad at a video game. One happened, <laughs> like, uh, I... WWF No Mercy. Mm. We needed to win... Because we did, like, this faction thing between me and a couple of my friends. So, like, we needed to unlock the World Heavyweight Championship. And so, the first thing is a Royal Rumble match. And, like, if you don't finish first, or, like, if you don't, like, win the match, like, the way the tree goes out for the story, it's just, it gets fucked. It's so hard. And so I was, like, so close to winning, and, like, I don't know, like, two of my friends were behind me, and they were horsing around. One bumped into me, and it was enough to, like, fuck up what I was doing, mm-hmm. and I got thrown out of the ring. Mm-hmm. I, like, choked him out. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then, two, I was playing a game of Madden just by myself. <laughs> And then uh, I threw an interception to lose the game in, like, I don't know, some season mode. And I took uh, Mary Claire's copy of Final Fantasy X and just snapped it over my – just snapped it in half and Ooh. threw it away because I was so mad. Oh, no. I told, she, she knew about that later on. She didn't know for a while, but she found out later on. <laughs> <laughs> she never asked for it back so I never felt like I needed to buy it. Oh, shit. You never replaced it? Oh, I did. Oh. I'm pretty sure I did at some point, but yeah. Right in. Let us know. Is Matt a good I, I'm cousin? I'm pretty sure I did, yeah, at one point. But yeah, I snapped that thing in half. And as soon as I did it, I still didn't feel good about it, but I was still pissed off or I didn't feel that bad about it. Mm-hmm. That's all right. She's got a little payback for you at the end of this email. Oh, all right. Um, and then uh, I, there was, I forget. There was something else. Oh, like playing baseball in, in the alley and uh, breaking someone's window. Ooh. I was famous for being the first one out like, oh i was quick. When, when shit went down when shit went down yeah uh yep. <laughs> we used to like play uh 
uh, we used to like do like this little carnival thing like in, in like uh, my neighbor's like front yard or whatever and we all like make these stupid fucking games and we made fake currency and uh, we went around and there was one that required throwing a ball off like the side of the brick and of course one day it goes through a window oh fuck I was in my friend claims uh, that I was in my house before he could turn around to see where I went yeah that makes sense <laughs> I was I was gone to November yeah. on a very serious level. Yeah, that was how Sean and I were. Like it was just <laughs> nope, fuck this, we're out. We didn't do it. Yeah. I feel like we never did anything. We never did anything intentionally to like hurt or break <laughs> someone's something. But you know, right? Like, uh, I think I was in fourth grade, fourth or fifth grade when this happened. I was watching this softball game, and I was watching w- w- with a friend of mine. Like we never really like hung out after school Mm -hmm. but we were all we were just at this game so we were just sitting on the bleachers we're on the highest bleacher and we would just kind of joke around and do like that like scare gym where like you pretend to push them but you save them immediately afterwards like Mm -hmm. you like push your chest but then get their back like oh saved you yeah yeah, right i see there's risk goes bad (laughs) yeah uh, so um i i i fucked that up Mm -mm. um I think I pushed her a little too hard Mm-mm. and I, my hand was too weak to keep her supported Mm-mm. and her weight just, she fell Mm-mm. completely on her back Mm-mm. and you know, it had like that takes to win out of you and you can't cry just yet. She was doing like that, like hiccup crying or whatever. Oh, and I was like, I was asking if she was okay, but like, you know, she was about to cry and you know, people were starting to notice it or whatever. And I just ran home. <laughs> oh no. I, <laughs> No, gone just, to November. I, gone oh, to November, no. man. Stealth level one hundred. Just uh, oh I, like, like, I, like I even like there was a hill behind us, and then there's a creek behind the school. So I went all the way down to the divot of that hill, so nobody could see me, and I just snuck along the bottom of the hill and just left. Fuck. And I felt I felt horrible about the whole thing. One more story that is embarrassing. Um, the day the Ravens won the Super Bowl, um, what like. Six years ago now, or is something like that. Oh, when that Joe Flacco, yeah, when Joe Flacco was the quarterback, I had day drunk like the entire day because the Cavs played the Penguins at twelve o'clock, and I was like, "All right, it's fucking let's go." And then the like, Penguins beat the shit out of the capital, so I was like, drinking my sorrows away. Yeah, and then I never stopped. Like you know, some people like nap and then get back to it. I never stopped. I was at full throttle, and it was to the point where I remember the game, but the last play, like everything past that, I I'm blacked out. But I do remember. Calling my parents crying that the Ravens won the Super Bowl. Oh my god! And I was like, <laughs> Oh my god, the Ravens won the Super Bowl! And then I ended up puking my brains out, and my ex girlfriend cleaned it all up. I while you're on the phone? Uh, no, not oh, while okay. I was on the phone. After I hung up, it was like when I laid in bed, and it all just fucking hit me. I oh, guess. Yeah. And then <laughs> she said that there was a, a hole in the bag that was in the trash can, so it was all over. The oh place. no! It was. Oh, I felt real bad. Uh. Yeah, I guess the other question is, would we ever do any of these again? So I guess I would do that day drink again, because that was fucking awesome. <laughs> would you do the high five, high fire five? I mean, I, th- I think you did kind of Yeah, the high would. five I'd do. I wouldn't set my whole hand on fire. I'm pretty good on just that. A, just a little bit. Just, yeah. yeah. If you had cologne right now and you said, yo, you want to do the pass off? I'd be like, yeah, let's do it once. <laughs> you know? Uh, but, I'll uh, tell you what, what I would never do again. Go buy Final Fantasy 13 for 10 bucks at a Best Buy. Hey, speaking of which, uh, Mary Claire follows up. For games that need that Resident Evil 2 and Final Fantasy 7 remake, Kirby Air Ride, which I guess. Mm. Yeah, I like Kirby Air Ride yeah, a lot. I'd be down with that. I never played it, but. Yeah, you can make the rest of the game playable. Oh. We played that a lot. Because the, ci- the city part was me, her, and the her most brother. played, I feel, right? Hmm. Tales of Symphonia. Which one was that? Was that the that, that, that was the that was the first one on GameCube. Oh, is that that okay? Yeah. Uh, Medal of Honor: Rising Sun. Mm. Oh, that's the one. Like PS2 era stuff. That's the PS2. Yeah. That's the one that leads off with the uh, Pearl Harbor attack when you're on the oh, boat. Yeah, yeah that's um, the one I played. I yeah. think that was the first World War II game that kind of leaned into you on the Japanese front and not on the German front. Oh, interesting. There was a lot of, like su- like um like kamikaze like attackers. Oh, in, from, yeah. It was there was some shit. Like it wasn't the best game in the world, but I think that was the first one to kind of do that side of it. That one could be. I mean, I could see that. Hey, speaking of uh, game preservation earlier, and that the EA is the one company who seems the big company who's doing it right, other than Nintendo. That's fucking wild, right? Yeah. You should watch, <laughs> dude. That that whole talk was really fascinating. Um, 
But also Medal of Honor, they're trying to make a comeback with Respawn making that Medal of Honor game. So maybe. That'd be down. I mean. Yeah. I trust Battlefield Respawn. did yeah. it. With, yeah. uh, with one. Yeah. Battlefield 1. Not their newest one didn't quite do it. But like Call of Duty just did it. And I think that turned out kind of well. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, why not? Why not Medal of Honor? The last couple games here have been not. Ugh. Uh, Ben, get ready to screen. Golden Sun. To do that. Mm. You think Isaac's gonna end up as a Smash character? No, he's a trophy. Why right. would he... I wish. I know. Ah. That'd be cool, but no, nah, man. But yeah, I, I would want to see another Golden Sun. I never played that. And Dude, I, one on know. Switch would be... Yeah. But there's something about that pixel art. Yeah, it does look There's cool. something about that that makes it pop. Uh, and Final Fantasy Thirteen, just for Matt. Is the, it's written here. I mean, if there is... If there's anything that needs to be... I guess remade. That's I think that's a that's a valid. I, I would think about coming back to that game if they changed the fighting system in it. If it, it the, yeah. the problem was if it played more. Wait, like, no, I thought the fight system was good. It was just that the game like wasn't it like took ha- forever. Hallway? Yeah, it just right. took a long time to get going. Wasn't that the problem? You see, I never made it to the end of that game to see the fight system come to life. But the uh, first few hours of that is just an auto battler. Uh, like it's it's not fun at all. Yeah. And then you're running in a straight line, which you know. For an RPG, kind of sucks, but ten does that for the majority of the game. It guides you through, but at least the battle system was like straightforward, turn based. Yeah, like mm-hmm. I had some options. This one, it was, there was just nothing to do in the first five hours. I felt like my hands were uh, were cuffed, and then the world and the characters around it, I could give two fucks about. So it was like, you know, like we're saying, like Death Stranding, like had this has at least the story and the setting to keep me going. RDR two had the characters to kind of keep me going. Final Fantasy, I had, like none of that. There was like not, no mechanic, no gameplay, no story, no character. And, and if anything, the characters drove me away from it because of that annoying pink hair bitch. Oh. For meal or something is her name. Oh, the one with uh, not lightning, but like the oh, one her hair is like super her, high. Yeah, her hair voice that yeah, was annoying. Yeah, the, the vanilla voice acting was terrible. Yeah, her, she she has like yeah that reddish pinkish yeah. hair. Yeah, pigtails or whatever. Yeah, go go and play that. It wasn't that I was reacting because I just saw your fucking pin tweet. <laughs> And so seeing his face again upsets me. Do you know who signed it? Ben. One Ben Barris. Yeah, of course. We got two signatures. Of course. Keep it going. Yeah, keep it Let climbing. Let Paramount know. Jesus. Well, if you want to find that, uh, you can follow us all on Twitter. Also, thank you, Mary Claire, for the email. Uh, oh, you you can email us at podcast at thefreecheese.com. Ask us anything. Legit. Ask us anything. <laughs> uh, that was fun, drumming up some old memories. I'm going to call my brother now. Uh, uh, you can follow us on Twitter. The free cheese is at some free cheese. Mark is at aug underscore mental. Matt is at Matty ice one, three, one sign the petition, change it back. I'm at the free cheese. That is it. Go to gamehistory.org. Check that stuff out. Um, I don't know. What else you got? What are y'all playing this week? More death stranding, more star Wars. Mm -hmm. I don't see me getting anything else. Yeah. Uh, mostly control. Yeah, Death Stranding is a maybe. I don't know about this week, but it's it's on my radar. The I, I would just be in the. I that mean, was nice. Like Star Wars came out at the end of the week, so I had like the full week to kind of just get me through the hump. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm approaching Death Stranding as if it's like it's ready to read a book. So I'm yeah, like, don't expect to have that controller much in the first. Two no, no, no. Yeah, like like I I know what this is, so I think that's helping me. Yeah. Approach it a little better. Like once you kind of get the reins, though, like it's, it, there's not much like cutscene. It, like it's one you expected. There's nothing else. Like Metal Gear Solid Four, I felt like every time I turned a corner, I rolled into a cutscene. Yeah, yeah. I kind of wish there were more. Uh, yeah. I'm um. I don't know. I got to wrap up Devil May Cry. Pokemon's happening. I might look at Devil May Cry. Yeah, it, 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 it's fun, dude. I mean, um, well, maybe not the easiest, but the next like easy one. I just want a little bit of a challenge. No, yeah, I, I feel like I should have done that because I feel like some of these fights should have been a little longer than what they were um, to really feel the impact of it. But that's that. Uh, we'll be back next week with another show. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, listener. Bye. Hey, 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 pull my double trigger.